So I can learn a few things about something and then have a conversation forever. Yeah, it's true. Oh, I went the absolute opposite way. Just never like anything. Don't talk about anything. Don't even talk to people. Well, that'll be good for this. Yeah. <laughs> no, you guys go and I'll just lean in every once in a while and be like, no, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, residents, to the Dr. DC Podcast. My name is producer Richard, and across from me is the doctor himself. Hello. Each week, we talk about the weird and wonderful world of DC while fielding questions from listeners like you. That's, that was good. I know. That sounded a little bit like the I couldn't think of a PBS racist accent thing, to like, jump into. Like made possible by viewers like you. That sounded oh. like the PBS thing. But. Yeah, except for that we don't do anything good for the community. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actively hurting the community. Yeah, if anything, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah we're, 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 we're reestablishing stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. You like tropes? We got them. We got them. exactly. Oh, do we ever? Uh, speaking of things we got, we got a review. Hey, look at that! Uh, we got a five star review from Facebook uh, from Braydon <laughs> Ketty. Uh, amazing podcast that's both educational, funny, and widespread on its knowledge of DC Comics. These guys know their stuff well and can, might I add, do hilarious Alfred Pennyworth impressions. Okay, there we go. That- Thank you very much. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, it's such I, such a nice thing for you to do. It's very nice when your work has been appreciated by someone. <laughs> you princes of men. <laughs> you kings of Rhode Island. <laughs> uh, speaking of kings of Rhode Island, we have a king of the Great White North. We are joined today by comedian Connor Boyle. And apparently now a, a, a 3D uh, a architectural person. Yeah, yeah, we'll call it that. Yeah, that yeah. That's, right. I'm sure that's what's on I'm your sure, business card. Yeah, that's that's the official title. Uh, actually, the other day they told me they're like, okay, you have to have an email signature when you send out emails, and I was like, oh, sounds good. So I went to go make it, and then I was like, oh no, I have no idea what my job Did is. Did you make one of those like porn ones where the <laughs> at symbols a pussy? And <laughs> <laughs> like a yeah. naked woman out yeah. of like slashes and twos and per stuff. my last email dicks dicks <laughs> <laughs> equal sign equal sign equal sign equal sign three <laughs> you you know what i mean yeah. it's actually an equal sign capital d <laughs> well no i was going backwards i was going mid shaft to balls wow that's a yeah. weird place to start and end <laughs> that's my equal that's my uh, email signature <laughs> i mean that's that that's the most of a dick you've ever really seen so well i had a vasectomy so that's all of the dick i have <laughs> oh my god they still let you keep some yeah yeah just <laughs> mid shaft to balls oh okay <laughs> <laughs> you just lob off the head that's where all the babies come from <laughs> That's what they told me before I got in the van and they did the vasectomy. So. <laughs> <laughs> you just end up like uh, mowing this in. It's like, it's okay, Homer. They let you keep a little bit of your ball. <laughs> yeah, it keeps yeah, it in exactly. a jar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Welcome, Connor. Welcome to the show. You fit right in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, no, we're excited to have you because we... Well, I mean, I, I won't speak for YouTube, but we are only just getting to know each other just from... Like stand up in in town from yeah, like no, that, that from doing both. comedy in town. Yeah. yeah, no, we grew up together, <laughs> childhood well, friend. Listen, I don't know. You're a very connected, fellow. I didn't want to speak for you. Yeah, physically connected, but not like emotionally. well. Yeah, like a human, spatially yeah. aware. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I told you. Aware, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're just getting to know each other that way. I think you're a super funny guy, but you've also definitely got like a nerd streak in you. Well, I think the first the, the, sense, yeah. The first comedy set I saw you do largely hinged on a Werner Herzog impression. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the most uh, indulgent joke I've ever done in my life. It's like, if you guys can leave, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to keep doing the voice. Because it's, <laughs> it's the funnest thing to do it's, ever. Yeah, oh. it was incredible. I couldn't get that out of my head for so long. <laughs> I think we even did it on the show that week because we, it was so stuck to, in our it head. Was, yeah, it was not nearly as good. Yeah, it was a ton right. of fun. I think that was a good indicator. I think we literally after that, Reed and I looked at each other and we were like, "Oh, we, we have to get him on the podcast." Yeah, yeah. doing Werner Herzog is a complicated accent. <laughs> <laughs> doing a podcast is not a complicated profession. <laughs> Rate, review, and subscribe. <laughs> 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 that's amazing turn on notifications <laughs> it's so hard for me not to slip into Arnold that's my problem I always go to like turn on notifications wow that's a wow. huge jump wow. I'm surprised <laughs> well yeah I don't know <laughs> chill <laughs> uh, but yeah you clearly have some nerd cred 
Mm-hmm. Um, so we figured it was a good fit. But why don't we just start with like, our, obviously, we know you're into Star Wars. Mm. Uh, what are some of the other kind of nerd things that you're into? Are you into superheroes? Are you into comic books? Comic books or like fantasy or like any of that kind of stuff? I was big into uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh no, big That's my boy. Oh big no, fan. yes, big fan. Oh Fucking no, right. Uh, Welcome to the Silmarillion podcast again. <laughs> If you say something like that, <laughs> I'm gonna chum. <laughs> oh god. Uh, yeah, no. If we get to let's let's do uh, uh, what is it? A hundred. If we get to a hundred reviews, we will make a mini series Lord of the Lord of the Rings podcast. Yeah, there I will it make is. Make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> full of charming. Oh, full yeah. of charming. Yeah. Oh, when I'm in the gym, I'm charming. I'm always charming. <laughs> charming is a complicated <laughs> process. <laughs> uh, okay, so into Lord of the Rings. Yeah, uh, Watchmen. Uh, sure. Into that, and uh, that's something I do. I know, I, like I like all the Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I like the, all the Christopher Nolan ones over Batman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't read too many comic books. Like I, I, I really give out like an outward like, oh, that guy reads books and comic books, and it's right. like, yeah. no, no, you <laughs> again, not there's nothing. There. <laughs> well, you gotta ba- you gotta balance it out, right? You look like you do, and then you don't, and then and, you, yeah, yeah, subvert expectations. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, no, t- I think on this episode, I'm definitely gonna try and play the role of the guy who's just gonna infuriate your hardcore audience. Like I'm just gonna mix up facts. Anything I get right, I want credit hey, for. Anything is, I get wrong, it, it's ironic. This so. is yeah, common right, yeah, common yeah. misconceptions. I mean, anything's on the table at this point. Well, so. yeah, exactly. You know, and I mean, that's part of the point of the show too. We do have like lots of listeners who know their stuff, but the point is also you don't have to know your stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. sort of why I'm here. <laughs> because I mean, it's, it's literally the only thing I bring to the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's also. I think that it, we we won't we don't we don't advise people to be like you. So this well, is an no, opportunity I mean, no, no. in any way. Yeah. So this is an opportunity yeah. for people to learn, but we're not having to go through the effort to try to be anything like you. Yeah, they don't have to live with that. Regret. Yeah, like a, an auditory <laughs> cautionary tale. Like, yeah. Don't do yeah. this. <laughs> I've listened to this every week, and boy, has it steered me in the right direction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is your own nerdy, scared, straight program. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, you you know those those movies and stuff like. Did you ever watch like the you know, like the old Christopher Reeves Superman stuff? We were talking about it a bit because we were talking about Brando before yeah. we started recording. <laughs> Did you ever like watch those or like any of the animated shows, the cartoons? No, I, I swear I've seen like little clips and pieces of everything. So I'm like, oh yeah, I've watched that. And then someone asked me about it. I'm like, oh no, I've actually never seen that. <laughs> right. Movie, I've just out. watched like three minutes on <laughs> YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of shows that I think that I've watched. And yeah, it's the same thing. I'm yeah, like, like, oh, never mind. <laughs> like, I thought I knew the gist and I really don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just a little bit of chum. Yeah, it's like, yeah. apparently I've never seen Two Broke Girls. <laughs> I've seen two girls, uh, but it, yeah, it, but yeah, did and you they were the probably two, broke. Did you know that the two, <laughs> did you know the two broke girls? What they were doing for that money? Yeah. Two broke girls doesn't have one cup in it. <laughs> no, no. Wait, you watch like three, four seasons, waiting like the cup's going to show cup? up, right? <laughs> People keep talking about this video. Where the where the fuck does the cup show up? And then you Who plays wrote, the cup. <laughs> I, th- I think it was the cook. <laughs> Christian Slater as the cup. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. I'd watch him get shit on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I swear this is about po- co- uh, comic books. <laughs> All right. So, uh, just but I, we're, we've got lots of stuff to talk about in terms of comic books. We got, I just want to do... I just need this. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, Lord, geez, don't say it like that. Stop grabbing him. I need this. <laughs> don't go anywhere. <laughs> um, just stop moving. I need this. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fucking Jesus you, Christ. <laughs> you like you like read them as a kid kind of thing? Or? Read them as a kid, and then uh, like as soon as the movie came out, I was like, this is just the coolest shit that's ever yeah. happened. Yeah. Like, I still remember seeing the first one in a movie theater, and like uh, that scene where um, Bilbo like kind of freaks out for a second yeah, and yeah, lunges yeah. for the ring scared the shit out of me. Yeah. And uh, it's still one of the scariest moments I've ever had in a movie theater. That's, that's a good pull. I like that one. Yeah. yeah. Because he's, you're meant to feel safe. You're in Rivendell. You're in Rivendell, and he's like, "Here's you know some mithril," and he, like, yeah. and then the ring pops out, and he loses it. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Did you ever watch the '70s animated one? I saw again clips of that one, and I'm like, yeah. "Sure, I've seen that." Yeah, that's one that I thought I had seen, but I had only seen inconsolably high, sitting next to my dad, trying to make sure he didn't think I was high. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you weren't super focused on the movie? I was 
so high. Is it one of those ones <coughs> where you just like, okay, I'll wait five minutes and then say something else so he doesn't think this I'm This is high. what happened. I, I got home from a party. I was crazy high. And mm. it was 11 or 11.30 or something. I, like, I thought I was like, I'm in the clear. I'm yeah. going home early. Like, How could it possibly be anybody? And he was still up. And I was like, fuck. And he was, he was like, hey, it's this animated Lord of the Rings. I know you like Lord of the Rings. And I was like, that's great. And I had to sit <laughs> down next to him. And then I was like, oh, I got to pretend like I'm capable of focus. So I was like, man, there's a good part coming up. And then just nothing happened. <laughs> it was like not a part where something happened. Because you had never seen it. And I was like, well, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back now, it was not a great deception. <laughs> I, I'd be very curious if he had any idea. He must have known. Something was up. There's it. no way he didn't know. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> His son's eyes just demon dick red. Like, I love this part. Like, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> just wait. Watch this. And there's nothing. Just exposition. Also, yeah. you had never seen it. <laughs> and I had never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's my memory of that movie. Mm-hmm. Are you getting stoked for the uh, the TV show that's coming out? Oh, for the uh, the Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Like the Amazon one? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen like... Uh, Second Age, Fall of Numenor. Ooh. We're getting the good shit. Sure. Fucking. Do you need me to tell you about? No. In fact, our, about our king Arfarazon. <laughs> no, de- it's declaring I, war on the Valar. I'm glad that that <laughs> like you 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 had proven that the things that I already knew. But I'm I'm good. I, I oh, already I'm knew sure. it. Yeah. How yeah. dare you? How dare you? Yeah, I'm too busy fucking chicks. <laughs> Jess. <laughs> I'm gonna tell. Shut I'm up. gonna tell your wife on you. <laughs> Shut up. I meant like like baby chickens. <laughs> oh no. That's not better. Take up. Make me feel huge. <laughs> Jesus I think this is the most debaucherous start we've I don't understand episode. why. I don't know what it is about Connor that makes us this terrible. Except all the booze. We haven't done like a we boozy record drank. in a while. It's true, but I and I haven't drank probably in a couple months. Well, that's probably part of it. Yeah, and I'm just getting over a flu. Right. And I'm sort of delirious, and I've been in a coma for four days. So, right. Yeah, so we thought maybe yeah. We thought because you, as self-stated, Connor, you're not necessarily yeah. a big comic book guy. We sort of had a big, sort of broad theme for this episode. We just we got comedy. a big bra. <laughs> we got a big bra <laughs> hey, in for this episode, <laughs> and here she is. Uh, <laughs> just a giant. Her, her name is her name is Misconceptions. <laughs> I mean, that implies something different, I think. Yeah. Um, that yeah hey, would you mind editing me out of this one, actually? <laughs> uh, we've already sent it to your employer. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we're talking about common misconceptions. So we thought it would be a fun way to be like, what do you just like, what, what do people just think about these characters that may or may not be true yeah. in the actual comics or in like actual Which is good because somebody anything. who like is interested in this time to think, but is sort of like a sort of arm's length away from it, there might be a lot of con- misconceptions you may already have. Okay. Um, question one I got for you. Let's do it. What's a, what's a superhero? <laughs> what is a comic book? Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the ones I keep getting just have naked women in them and I... Uh... Hey, those oh. are superheroes in their own right. Yeah, listen, this podcast is not that cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I've misread the room. <laughs> oh no, you've Ow. read the room right. <laughs> Just the wrong gender. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wonder Woman actually has the a lasso that does uh, makes you tell the truth, right? Yes. And then she's got the brace. What do the bracelets do? The bracelets. <clears throat> uh, I mean, uh, in, stop bullets. Well, they do. I mean, they they are themselves sort of indestructible. In many <clears throat> incarnations, the yeah. bracelets also like contain some of her power. Okay. And she's actually almost unwieldy powerful without, without them, them. Uh, so in some versions that is the case that they sort of contain her power the movie certainly implies that because the movie makes her the like the god killer that mm. she's like the last yeah. thing left on earth that can destroy Ares basically and, and the bracelets sort of contain that, that power a bit does she get her uh, does she get like the bracelets and the uh, little lasso at the same time or is it piecemeal like how's she getting these she, things in most versions she gets them all at once she gets yeah she gets the lasso she the gets sword. the bracelets she gets a, a sword possibly she gets the tiara which she can throw sort of captain america shield style no, i always forget the tiara uh, when does the jet come involved 
the jet in the in sometimes in the, in the early comics, the jet was <coughs> something the Amazons <coughs> had because they were actually sort of technologically advanced. Yes. In more modern <coughs> comics, they made the Amazons very like bows and arrows and swords and shields, and the jet was something she got like later in just the world. Yeah. <laughs> she just found it. And yeah. She tripped on it by accident. Yeah, like, Whoops! Wow. Jet for me. Jet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but yes, yeah. She generally gets most of those things all at once. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Yeah, no, that's cool. All right. no, that's great. <laughs> all right. Well, you can find us on Facebook. <laughs> we got a fuck ton of questions. Yeah. We should probably dive into Let's them. Let's do it. Let's go right in. All right. Uh, well, first question. We're going into Facebook. Going to the face and the book. Going to the Facebook. Oh yeah, this is starting to. Oh, great, great first question all coming right. from Adam Upper. Upper. I hardly know her. <laughs> Waka waka. <laughs> I got some great jokes for you tonight. Da, da, da. Uh, who asks, does Aquaman really deserve the shit he got for years? Right. Coming misconception, Aquaman's a fucking pussy. Yeah, I mean, let's take the... Have you seen the Aquaman movie? The yeah. one with Jason Yeah, so yeah. Let's just briefly block that out of our mm-hmm. minds. Uh, Aquaman, for a long time, is the butt of the joke. Yeah. Right. Um, I think there's some really, I think some of the best butt of the joke stuff I've seen for Aquaman is Robot Chicken. Oh, I mean, yeah, they... Robot Chicken so leans into Aquaman being shitty. Yeah, it's very, very funny. I mean, if you listen to one of our very recent uh, Patreon episodes, you can hear you can hear a great uh, time uh, in which Aquaman was a piece of shit. No, it's not even a Patreon episode. Was that regular? That's a special. Oh, that was a special. Oh, yeah. well then, you've probably already heard it, yeah. but... Is this a trick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking uh, fuck that guy uh yeah i mean i think he became a joke because there was a cartoon in the 70s they did these sort of filmation cartoons same animation style as that old spider-man yeah, uh, cartoon yeah. Where they, you know they reuse frames to oh yeah the whole background's the to same cheap out on animation and but, shit but is it like in water is it just blue going back the whole time oh yeah no. it's pretty bad it's like the thing that's already really easy to just make like he just waves and it's like I don't fucking want to make bubbles and waves. So, so there's a bunch of cheap ones. That's it's like Aquaman and Aqualad. I actually have a bunch of them on DVD. Um, it was you're like the, a, you're the only one. Aquaman <laughs> and friends. I mean, yeah, I'm the one person that they were like, guys, there's a run on these now. Oh yeah. my god, print it. Make five more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, Hold on, I gotta burn it on my MacBook. Johnny, do you have a CDR? <laughs> CDRW. Uh, it's a rewritable CD. Wait, no, no, no. I appreciate the specific, specificity. Uh, for those of you listening at home, there used to be these things called CD ROMs. I feel there's a lot of explanation that have to happen um, here. But yeah, so there were these very, very silly, very cheap cartoons. And then he was part of this sort of group cheap cartoon that was called the uh, Super Friends. And Aquaman was always just kind of like, he'd be like, I'll help. Wub, 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 wub. And a fish would show up and he would just surf on the fish and then <laughs> nothing would happen. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> He wasn't helpful at all. You really do got to feel for the guy, though, because there's just honestly not that much water-based crime. Well, I think that's the other part of it, is that <laughs> even in the comics, you know, everyone had a weakness. For yeah, it. It's yeah. not necessarily the way comics are now, but yeah. everyone had a weakness. <clears throat> Superman's got kryptonite. <clears throat> Martian Manhunter has fire. Green Lantern, for a bit, couldn't affect anything yellow. Yeah. Um, Aquaman's was yeah, that he had yeah. to be... Yellow. No. Yeah, yeah. the oh, most yeah. terrifying of colors. Yeah. Uh, Aquaman's was that he had to be in the water at least once every 24 hours. Jesus Christ. So there's, I think there's even a robot chicken sketch or something where it's like someone is committing a crime on the beach and Aquaman's like, hey, hey, stop that. Hey, hey, come in here. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't want to come out here, do you? He's just like, hey, can't come in. Why don't you come in the ocean? I'll show you, show you what's up. Stop that. He's like, so there's a little bit of that to it too. You're right. Cause there's like a limit on what, stories you could tell yeah it's like oh great another freighter like dumped oil or something (laughs) (laughs) but i think what's interesting is that that it took them so long to figure out that it's like oh what happens above the water and on the land means so much less than oh you know this one the the earth 70 percent water and underwater is unknown and cool and you don't know anything about it but let's just focus on the other shit when it's like, oh, if we just point down, it's yeah. going to be a lot more interesting. And he's got all of the capabilities at this yeah. point. It took them so long to figure out Well, that. but here's the thing. So that version, that idea of Aquaman, the silly, ineffectual hero. Yeah. 
A little fish ling- out of water tail. It lingered so much longer than in the comics. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so the movie that you have seen. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about that Aquaman. Because that Aquaman. Oh, let's talk about that. That Aquaman. Aquaman draws on about the last twenty years of Aquaman. That, that daddy is thick. Uh, I'll tell you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm Get wet. wet. Yeah. yeah. I'm not much of a podcast, bro. Is me rubbing my nipples getting picked up? Is that, <laughs> is that getting picked up? Oh, we, I mean, know. Yeah. Yeah. we know. We know. I'm picking it up. That's for sure. It's a I'm picking it all the way up. So that Aquaman is a badass. Yeah. He's got that crazy lion mane hair and stuff like that. That, at least the hairstyle. And that smile. Oh. Those eyes. Yeah. And if he, and if he, <laughs> if, he, if, he <laughs> if he put his shirt back on and jumped out of the water, he'd look like a gas station attendant. But otherwise, he looks great. Yeah. <laughs> He looks amazing. How dare you besmirch Jason Momoa in this, your house. Hey, bro, do you want diesel or premium? <laughs> uh, but that, like, at least that lion mane hair, that comes from the 90s run where Aquaman is sort of a bit of an outcast. They sort of revamped him. He lost a hand. He had a hook hand. Yeah, he hook hand took, fucking he was took badass. Off the, the orange shirt, and he just had this long <coughs> hair and a beard and a hook hand. Yeah, the fucking hook hand rule and shit like that. He was badass as hell. Yeah. I'm just picturing him doing like the uh, the Hulk walk away with like the duffel bag, but like from bay to bay, like, yeah. <laughs> the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. Just kind of, <laughs> time to move to the next town. Time yeah. to move on. <laughs> you know, I've, I've done all I can here uh, on this shoal. Yeah, he truly just gets is in the back of a pickup truck. And just, he back truly of a is trawler. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of, he truly is the littlest hobo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, he's the littlest Momo. Oh, uh, oh no, there we go. Uh, yeah, you win. Thank you. <laughs> um, so between that and then in like the two thousands and that, they really leaned into the Atlantis stuff. <coughs> that it's another nation. <clears throat> that it's super advanced. Yeah. That he's the rightful king. That it's like this power struggle thing. That is what the movie draws on. And it's badass as hell. But that's been happening in the comics for twenty years, and it's only. In whatever that year, the year that came out, 2018 or 2019, yeah. that people were like, oh, yeah, Aquaman. All right. Okay. I guess he is kind of cool. But if you've been reading the comics for that long, you, you knew he was cool the whole time. I, it's also important to say that Aquaman is also the doctor's favorite character. No. Yeah. <laughs> I've been initiated. Yeah. <laughs> when did you make that bad decision? <laughs> Uh, this was a wedding gift from my wife. Wow. Oh, she sorry. Just, she wanted this was to make a wedding sh- gift from my wife. Uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. She just wanted to make sure that no other woman would ever want to fuck him. So, <laughs> the largest imprint. Well, I mean, I've taken care of that with the not taking care of myself. <laughs> <laughs> you took care of that by not taking care of anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did it for you, honey. Yeah. That'd be uh, great. You, you guys ever get divorced? And she's like, no, no, I'm keeping the tattoo. You're giving me the tattoo. <laughs> pulls up the wrap. cheese grater. Just, oh, God. <laughs> Oh, gee. Or she just gets half. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. I don't know what's uh, worse. But yeah, I mean, so no, I don't think Aquaman deserves the shit that he's gotten after a certain point. Um, In the I, 70s, like that comic that we read just Jesus the other week. Jesus fucking Christ. Aquaman definitely deserves shit. Because he was not well written. He was treated like an afterthought. I'll say that he deserves way extra for that time period where he was terrible. I think he deserves just as much as he got. So you think he's finally out of like perdition and like is in a position where he can finally be like, he deserved the hate because of how bad. Oh yeah. yeah. It was a sentence. It was a sentence and he's finally come out of it. (laughs) Right. Okay. Yeah. I think he's finally ready to be regain the love and people can now go back and read the, uh, the hook hand and be like, Oh, it's awesome. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Without a doubt. All right, let's I'm go. Glad to the that next. we're all on the same page, though. That Jason Momoa is fucking sexy. <laughs> oh yeah, no, oh, no, no. Un- yeah, that's an unshakable belief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going nowhere. Yeah, yeah. I sh- I shake it and it literally doesn't move. No, that's how hard it is. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I have to usually wait five, ten minutes and try again. But <laughs> yeah, if I watch Aquaman for more than four hours, I have to go to the hospital. <laughs> You just hear like code Momo, yeah. code Momo. This man, this man can't chum enough. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird that when you chum, it goes whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to the next question. Coming from the most interesting resident. Uh, Andrew Delgado? That's right, of course. Who else would it be? I don't understand. It's the most interesting yeah, resident. I'm There's so only sorry. one. I'm so sorry. Uh, and they ask, what are your favorite and least favorite DC misconceptions? people get from only seeing adaptations. Any examples you wish were canon? 
Well, let's let's flip this around a little bit. From the stuff that you've seen, Connor, what do you? Uh, let, let's use Batman since you've seen like the Nolan movies. What's something that you think? Why is Batman always Christian Bale? Is that a misconception? <laughs> <laughs> what what is something that you think the 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 movies have done with Batman that you're not sure whether or not that's actually how he is? Mm. Uh, He's an asshole British guy who gets mad at lighting people. Oh yeah, that's true. That has <laughs> to yeah, be true. It can't be. <laughs> do I come through? And go no oh, no 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 no! Mess with your lights. Then why do you mess with my scene? It would be so good if they'd kept that in the movie. Like, don't address it. Just no. throw it in halfway through. That it would be the only good thing in Terminator Salvation. <laughs> 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 like, no, I really believed him in that part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the best he's ever been. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, for me, I, I just... I, I liked how much they played up his billionaire uh, aspect in right. the movie, like, you know, uh, taking the whole ballet out. I was like, okay, Playboy stuff. Yeah. That's great. Because I felt like all the other ones, he had his bat cave and then he had his big house and then he didn't do anything else that was really cool billionaire style. Yeah. That's really interesting, though, because it, it's the thing that I don't see very often in the comics is the Playboy stuff. Well, I, I think this is I think this is a fair point. And I think part of it is that the movies don't often play to that because even the Nolan ones, they give you a bit of it, but there's a lot of the, like, but I'm sad. Yeah. <laughs> like shit. But those couple of moments where it's like, no, 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 you still have to throw the party. Even if Batman <laughs> begins, it's like, you have to throw the party. You have to be the yeah. billionaire. Yeah. You're like, yeah, he shows up in Dark Knight with the models and stuff like that. He takes the ballet out, stuff like that. Those things do occasionally come up in the comics. Probably not enough, but I think there is a misconception that Batman is only <laughs> brooding. Yeah, no, he seems to be twenty four seven brooding in all those movies. Like, I can't crack a smile. Yeah, and yeah. He, like, I don't. I'd like to see him a little more, uh, more emotional. Like, he's got all these hot ladies on his yeah. arm. Like, laugh a little. Even Enjoy those old, it. even those old Burton ones. There's a party. Yeah, would your parents die or something? <laughs> Jeez. There, there's the there's the big party scene in. <laughs> oh, 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 the billionaire's parents. Yeah. Die. Oh no! Now what will you do? <laughs> Who will look after you? Yeah, exactly. Your butler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my best friend. How will I you fend him. for yourself with the billions of dollars? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, even in that Burton Batman movie, there's a party scene with Michael Caine and he's schmoozing and stuff like that. You know? I like the part when it went... <laughs> the weird thing is when you get into the Schumacher ones, yeah. Batman is the silly schmoozy one. Yeah. Bruce Wayne is always sad. Super sad and serious, yes. Like, yeah. Which is... It's such a weird thing to have done. But yeah, I, I mean, I think that's true. I think there's a misconception that Batman is only brooding and sad. There's a big thing in the comics about him playing up the other side. In the cartoon, in the Batman animated series that was like so formative. I mean, for a yeah. lot of things that are considered to be Batman now, there's a, there's a ton of stuff where he's this sort of smarmy, schmoozy Bruce Wayne. In the Arkham games, at the beginning of Arkham City, they're talking about millionaire Bruce Wayne, and he walks by and he goes, billionaire. And oh, like, great line. Like, finger point, finger gun. <laughs> like, he's just like, you know. there's Those things are, are in there. I think that's absolutely right. I, I think even though they've shown up in the movies, I think people think that Batman is not good at acting the part. I, I feel like, like I mean, you're pointing at a huge misconception is that which one is the uh, uh which is the 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 disguise well i mean I, yeah i mean i think if you spend any real time with that character you know that batman is who he really is yeah oh yeah bruce wayne is, is the disguise a mask. yeah bruce wayne is made up that's a fiction yeah i mean he is born bruce, bruce wayne, wayne but that's he but has that to play that character is, yeah that's it's a parody it's not who he is yeah. exactly yeah he he tr and I guess he just, it all looked like a lot of work though. Like, I, I, if I yeah. was him, I would be like, oh, lean into the billionaire stuff, do Batman stuff on the weekends, maybe? <laughs> like, well, see, and Green Arrow does that. Yeah. Green Arrow is like, a, he actually is sort of playboyish, devil may care. <laughs> kind of guy and then he uh, also shoots an arrow through the eye of drug dealers un un unless you <laughs> unless you watch the tv show which they modeled on batman yeah yeah but see but that show also made the like fed into the misconception because yeah. even if you're modeling on it on batman the show's version of oliver queen does not do a good job of pretending to be a playboy no yeah. he's he's not good at not being 
but the city. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, Nolan's Batman does a better job of it than than that shows Oliver Queen does. I don't think someone's doing a good job with the city. Yeah. You need to tell them that they're not doing great at the city. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be a better way to phrase this. The city. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a D minus in the city. All right. Well, by that token, then I think uh, the Christopher Nolan ones, he should have had him enjoying himself a little bit more when he was Batman. Like when he's breaking somebody's arm, he should have been like, nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not as Bruce Wayne, Not, but as yeah, Batman. As Batman. Like, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> he's like singing to himself. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> they should have made Oliver Queen a teacher. Mm. You have failed social studies. <laughs> so Matt Poulter, who yeah. has been a guest on the show a couple of times, he's uh, currently doing his his PhD <laughs> in in film studies. Yeah. So he he teaches, you know, as part of that. And I don't know if he actually did it or not, but there was a while where he said he was going to get a stamp that was just Gandalf that says "You shall not pass." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's incredible! <laughs> that's incredible. Uh, that's yeah. so like the poor kid who gets that that momentary like oh sweet and then it's like oh no yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice oh wait that's not nice at all <laughs> Richard can you think of like a, a misconception that you about Batman specifically or just in general that you you like or or dislike that you um I think that I I, I mean the common misconception that I don't even think we've gotten asked that much about is that like specific female characters aren't like as powerful. Uh, it's a pretty easy one, uh, uh, but one that I think DC tends to use to its own advantage by making them s e even more powerful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, those, some of the female characters are way more powerful than you would give them credit for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Black Canary, for example, could absolutely take out Superman. And there's an easy misconception that she's not powerful. Yeah, yeah. I think th th those ones are always super, super interesting to me. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean... It, it, or the misconception that, ba that Superman isn't racist. Well, he just we, loves America. What are you talking about? We've, yeah, we've, except, we've talked about the suicide slum yes. problem before. There's a yes. certain certain street that uh, certain there's a part section of, town. of Metropolis that Superman apparently doesn't patrol that was riddled with crime, and that's where Black Lightning becomes the sort of street level hero there because Superman does not help out. Uh, I, I like that he's just like, oh god, there's just there's so much crime. <laughs> it's like, and I can only move faster than a speeding bullet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, just staying in with Lois Lane. That's all he wants to do now. Well, I mean, yeah, speaking of speed, well, he's, bullet, a, yeah. he's a dad now, so yeah. I mean, that's true. Um, I think my, I, I, in a similar vein to the female characters thing, but making it about <coughs> men. Uh, <laughs> As you do. I think that the, the tagline for the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two white men talking definitively about things they kind of know. Yeah. Men talking about men. Um, well, I mean, this show's definitely gone that way. I was going to say, Aquaman, I think part of tying into the last question, yeah. Aquaman got a lot of flack, but as far as I'm concerned, and as many comics are concerned, Aquaman is almost at the power level of a Wonder Woman. Wow. He is not. Wonder Woman is stronger. Yeah. But he's much closer to her level <laughs> than people <coughs> give him credit for. Give him. You know, yeah. up until the last, you know, let's say 10 years of comics, really. Uh, and obviously Flashpoint put the two of them up against each yeah, other yeah. As, as adversaries. But, uh, you know, I, I think that that's one that I that sticks in my craw a little bit because I like Aquaman so much. Sticks in your craw. Sticks sense. in my craw. Yeah. Sticks yeah. in my crawfish. Sticks just like in my craw, Dad. Uh, oh, that craw, Dad. Oh, yeah, you like that craw? You like that crocodile? <laughs> Okay, I crawled out there, boy. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So much cage. Oh, my God. <laughs> Chewed him. <laughs> Chewed uh, him, Clint. Uh, all right, let's go I to the next. I'm chewing. <laughs> I'm chewing. <laughs> oh, yeah, you like that gumbo. I'm chewing right in now. Oh, God, you fit right in. <laughs> yep, no. That's, you got to come back now. You're in trouble. Uh, all right, let's go to the next question. Sure. Uh, comes from, I mean, the most interesting resident. Oh, you can't do this to me. What do you Is mean? Roland Sabaz? Yeah, obviously. Who else would it be? There's only one interesting resident, and it's this Fuck person. Fuck you. Um, That's a misconception. <laughs> Common. Uh, Roland asks, Plastic Man isn't seen as a powerhouse by fans of DC Comics, but he is definitely a very versatile and powerful character. The latest crossovers have shown that. He's not uh, just a funny character. Do you think we uh, will ever see a live action version to really show how cool he is? Thanks. Hashtag Jacques. Have you ever heard of Plastic Man, Connor? No, never. Not once. 
Well, take a guess. <laughs> so Pl- Plastic Man, his name is Eel O'Brien, and he gets like doused in this chemical that basically like is it plastic? Well, he it like it, some there's characters that can stretch, but he is actually turned into plastic and can stretch and change shape. And do all that kind of stuff. Just sits in a garbage dump in China for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that. So part of tying into this idea that like, Plastic Man is a very jokey, silly <laughs> character. He's, he goes yeah. on wacky adventures and he's often treated very silly. And he often acts very silly. But on that note that you just brought up about landfills, <laughs> there's a story called The Obsidian Age. And in that story... Plastic Man is transported back in time and frozen and shattered, and he settles to the bottom of the ocean. For thousands of years, he waits there until the modern day when the Justice League rescues him. Whoa. So he has been conscious and shattered and alive for thousands of years. Oh, my God. And it it drives him nuts. But he's he's functionally immortal (laughs) because he's just plastic. He's he's actually not... (laughs) technically speaking <clears throat> living matter it'd be really funny if they had him where he just ended up collecting into that like plastic island they just find him floating around yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> he gets turned into a bunch of fucking bracelets that you have to buy for two bucks. yeah so three. some like reusable shoes for yeah. some fucking <laughs> dumbass hipster yeah. like just a live strong bracelet that gets worn for like two weeks and then the person's yes. like well i don't care about this cause anymore <laughs> Yeah, thousands of plaz strong bracelets. Yeah. Oh god. But yeah, I mean like on that like Plastic Man is a silly wacky character like and he, his personality is very like yeah, I'm on the Justice League but like we can have fun. Blah, 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 blah. And part but I think he's allowed to be that because like bullets can't hurt him. He could live forever. <laughs> like he's he's sort of untouchable. He's wildly powerful, more powerful than he is ever really been shown used to effectively yeah yeah he sounds surprisingly well adjusted for spending eons on the like bottom of the ocean floor yeah i mean that's kind of an interesting story because it, it was like maybe one of the first times where they were like what if we what if we give plastic man trauma what if we take like this very fun character and we just like ruin his life <laughs> like, gotta love comics you know like uh yeah i mean i now to the point of will we get a movie I don't know. I doubt it. I would say no, but also like... At this point, we're getting fucking like such weird comic book movies. I do know that someone uh, really wants to play Plastic Man is Ben Schwartz. Yeah. He's been very vocal about it. He'd be an incredible... I think he'd be great. And he's, you know, he's got the wit. He's got Mm. kind of the look too, actually. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I... could see it and i mean you know he's coming off this like weird sonic (laughs) success that like a video game movie that is generally Mm. considered to be pretty good and is doing well yeah it's weird he maybe if it's if it's something that he cares about enough he could maybe make it happen yeah so i wouldn't say it's not possible it'd be great to see ben schwartz do like the uh the thing that kumail nanjiani did where he just gets uncomfortably jacked like oh kumail (laughs) It's important that they call it jacked because it's exactly what I'm going to do when I look at him. <laughs> like, come mail, not yeah. Johnny. Chum mail. <laughs> Chum mail. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, all I want to talk about. Yeah. <clears throat> I I mean, I, I I know it's because of, like, he, he's being paid to do it. It's He's dedicated. Oh, and he's been open about it. Yeah, he's been open about that. You know, he's dedicating all that time. Disney's paying for nutritionists and all that stuff. But, like... Listen, I, I know this is a DC podcast, but Marvel, there's got to be a character somewhere I could play. <laughs> and if you pay me to do it, I'll get in shape. You don't even need to do the movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, I want to say Chum Man, but I'm not going to say yeah. Chum Man. <laughs> Listen, cast me as... It's the new villain to Aquaman. Cast Chum me as Man. like, yeah, Na- Chum like Man. Namor's cousin. Yeah, but I just need to get jacked enough. He's like obsessively, if uh, 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 like uh, like uh, you're completely obsessed with Aquaman, and you just want yeah. to like uh, you you want to consume him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you want me to be Galactus? Yeah, just the eater of worlds. Yeah, yeah. But you just want to eat him at I one feel part like of that's his body. The wrong kind of body conditioning that I'm going for. <laughs> oh, I thought that I thought that's what you were already doing. I just figured I would go with the role. <laughs> Who's paying you to do this? Next yeah. question. <laughs> uh, next question uh, comes from Jack Fegan, uh, who asks... It's Fagan. No, it's not. He, he wrote Fegan. No, he wrote... It rhymes with Reagan. 
R E A G is Reagan, like Regan. Ronald Reagan. Regan, like the porn star. <laughs> Dude, you're overplaying your hand. <laughs> I know who you're talking about. Look, two significant <laughs> historical figures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ronald Reagan. Faye Regan. I'm saying <laughs> once. I mean, I don't know her first name. What? Uh, Faye Reganomics. <laughs> Faye Reganomics. <laughs> it's come trickle down. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, no. Uh, oh, God, definitely trickling down. <laughs> uh, Jack asked <laughs> uh, if you had to create. <laughs> uh, if you had to create... You pictured her giving her stump speech, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did. Four more years. <laughs> uh, Jack asks, if you had General to... General Secretary Gorbachev, <laughs> tear down this wall. <laughs> this cum wall. Show <laughs> me your balls. <laughs> General <laughs> Secretary Gorbachev. Show, show me your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's the crossover I didn't know I wanted. Yep. <laughs> oh. Still just picturing Nancy's there, but like just bewildered. Like, what's yep. happened? I think you just do it like Forrest Gump style. You just insert <laughs> Faye Regan into existing footage of Ronald Reagan. Yeah. I mean, I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the nuts thing could stay like, yeah, uh, uh, big nuts, small nuts, uh, 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 seen weird looking nuts, I see <laughs> nice looking nuts. That's all the nuts they is. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I just, just want to see those nuts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. Jackass. Sorry, yes. Uh, if you had to create your own misconception about a popular DC character, what would it be? Also, my name rhymes with Regan. Reagan. <laughs> Not Reagan. Not Reagan. It's Reagan. Re- Re- it's, it's Reagan, not Reagan? No, Reagan, not Reagan. Mm. She called him faggot last time, which made me very uncomfortable. I don't understand yeah. why. I'm not saying it. Show well, me the piece. Post- tell, explain the pieces of what I, I've said. <laughs> what I like about this question is that it's essentially asking us to gossip about superheroes. It's mm-hmm. like make up a rumor. Yeah. Like we're like catty High school girls, like, I'm make sorry. up a rumor about that fucking bitch Green Lantern. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like we're a bunch of catty high school yeah. girls? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm putting Batman in the burn book. Did, did, <laughs> didn't we just talk about how scrumptious Aquaman was? Hal Jordan can only make small constructs. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't you call the fucking Flash zaddy? I, I, I think we Jake are. Jake Eric is zaddy. Yeah. Hashtag Jake Eric is zaddy. I'm just saying. I think we've we've long passed being teenage okay. girls. So let's let's treat it let's treat it like that. Let's start a rumor, start a gossipy rumor about a super, a DC superhero. Okay, um, I heard Dick Grayson's that he got his name because he's huge. I mean that's I mean that's like a good rumor. Well, yeah, it doesn't have to be a bad one. I guess yeah, fair enough. Why do you want that to be a misconception though? Why do you want people why do you, why do you want people to think it's huge but it's not? I mean because it's it's clearly not. How did he fit in those tights? We would have seen a lump by that's now. That's why there's one hell of a tuck yeah. job. That's, that's, I mean, God damn. It's a couple times it, around. Or it just tucks in. <laughs> it's a couple of times around. He's got that weird like lump on yeah. the one leg because he's wrapped it around. I think it just goes back and up. I think that's the Up idea. and in? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fair enough. That's the idea. Uh, so, sorry. So, so the misconception you want is you, you want people to think that Robin Dick has Grayson a, has a huge hug yeah, yeah. when really it's normal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, normal to small. You don't even like saying small. You're just like, it's normal. You just immediately <laughs> di- conditioned to like say, no, it's normal. Even for fictional characters. <laughs> yeah. Him? No, he's fine. We're all fine. Yeah, there's no such thing as a small dick. It's the angle. <laughs> it's the lighting. <laughs> I'm not defensive. You are. <laughs> uh, Connor, your face is small. What's the what, what's the rumor, the misconception you want to spread about a DC superhero? I want to go for something obvious and just stupid as like like. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Uh, do you understand what podcast this is? <laughs> Yeah. Just like Aquaman obvious and swim. stupid is never something we've gone for. <laughs> I want low hanging fruit, real yeah. easy. Aquaman can't swim. 
<laughs> he, he has to wear floaties. Yeah. Oh my god! I just want to take the one thing he has. He's like, no, you guys, yeah. I can really swim. He's like, got one no. of those like scuba <laughs> torpedo things he holds on to that like <laughs> steer him around. A boogie board. He's got a bo- <laughs> Aquaman can't swim. Yeah, he can still he can breathe underwater, but he just sinks like a rock. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of him just standing around most of the time. Yeah, it just takes be- him so long to get played because he only walks at normal speed. <laughs> He's just really hoping something could happen in that nice, like, two, three meter section of shoreline. Yeah. <laughs> He's really good in the Caribbean yeah. and not so good out in open sea. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's true. It's like yeah. a lifeguard. Don't go too far. It, yeah. <laughs> Aquaman's territory is more like sandbars. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's why he doesn't bother with the, uh, Australia. It's just the coral reefs that hurt him so much. He just doesn't yeah. want to have to Ow. walk over the Ow. <laughs> Ow. Why don't you just swim over those? You're Aquaman, aren't you? I yeah. could, but I'm just, I'm tough. So. Your dick's small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my favorite misconceptions that came out on this show was the one that Simon King created about Superman and Lex Luthor. Oh, that they were working together? Uh, in a that, real estate scheme? Yeah, that because Lex is a real estate guy, at least in many of the movie yeah. versions. And a lot of Superman's fights end in collateral damage to buildings and things yeah. like that. Oh my that God. Lex was enabling Superman to get into fights yeah. so that he could cheaply buy up and rebuild the destroyed <laughs> And they were both, estate. yeah, they were, huh? ma- well, that, that, and that, and that it was like a, like a scheme that they were both in. On. Yeah. 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 It's an incredible idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'd watch that movie. <laughs> like, oh, I guess you right? got me again, Superman. Yeah. Ah, oh, shucks. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it again. Yeah, that's right. That was like, it's like in insider pocket. trading where Superman's like, maybe I'll fight Mongol downtown today. <laughs> <laughs> wink, like, <laughs> wink. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Go back to episode seventy seventy if you want to hear yeah. Simon King. Weird that that theory. building was already empty. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry though, but in the Superman's Spider-Man heat vision be, can't melt beams. <laughs> <laughs> Superman truthers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 LexCorp Tower was an inside <laughs> job. He didn't even hit Building Seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you do you have a misconception? Um, I I guess the um, the one I would just put out there that I'm not actually a hundred percent sure <laughs> counts as a misconception is okay. that Hal Jordan is a bad pilot. Oh, you just think that might be just true? It might be true. I mean, he was a good fighter pilot and a test pilot, but. You know, then you go by the movie. Yeah. He like deliberately wrecks like a fifty million dollar plane just to be like, hey, I'm better than an AI. And they're like, well, I just the, wish the like, whole the whole like industry's oh, gone down yes. now. No, you've made your point, but you are fired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's that's like the whole company's dead, like got under. Like, that's it. Like, that was our only plane. <laughs> It's upsetting because we I were just counting on this AI. Thing I wish to that, bail us out. We, we've been in the red you, for so long. You fucking hot shot. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, I yeah. I mean, I. I think I would throw it out there that maybe Hal Jordan is not that good of a pilot. But at least his dad's a great one. <laughs> Just, well, according to the movie, he blows up on the tarmac. He doesn't even get it in the did air. He? No. D- did he? Because I-, I wish they would have shown it. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's saying that because in this movie that is only like two hours long, they show the death of Hal Jordan's dad like four times. <laughs> in slow mo from different angles. This cough heavy episode is brought to you by coronavirus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously. But he's patient zero. Yeah. I love that he's literally weak to only kryptonite and a Chinese flu. <laughs> and magic. Oh, I apologize. Superman's and the color. Also... Oh, the color yellow. I get it now. That's Green Lantern. And oh, I don't. Oh. Uh, we have to cut that bit out. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't get the reference. I don't get the reference. Uh, what's the next question? <laughs> I don't understand. I didn't say what it was. Jesus Christ. You're the one who's drawing conclusions. <laughs> or common misconceptions. Yeah. Oh. oh. That's right. That's what racism is. Just a common misconception. I mean, that's maybe underplaying it. But yeah. Yeah, they're putting just, it as lightly yeah. as you can. Just racism. a simple misconception. You know what racism it is? It's just a common misconception. Yeah. Yeah. It's just things that I've seen it's, and was apparently... There's nothing mis- more insidious than that about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, no top to bottom, just a common misconception. It's certainly not like a power structure designed to oppress. No, no. I'd file it under a whoops. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's an oopsie. Yeah. If, if anything, it's just a thing that I was apparently wrong about because that 
was information I didn't have before. Oh. I apologize. Jesus, God. <laughs> Once again, I don't get the reference. I don't get the reference. <laughs> uh, uh, I told you at the beginning that racism is fun. <laughs> uh, I, uh, Mark Norman had one of the funniest things I ever heard yeah. about that. He was talking about like, uh, it's his joke. He's like, yeah, yeah racism. It's like, uh, like Nickelback, like really fun to make fun of, but you never want to see it in public. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's incredible. That is incredible. And, and it cuts you real deep, doesn't it? Do you know what's funny is that this is how you remind me that we should go. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> at yeah. a point. Um, wait, wait, wait. Richard, yeah, I need you to look at this photograph. <laughs> Every time I do, it makes me laugh. I love my penis, <laughs> which is normal. <laughs> Again, <laughs> normal. <laughs> normal against this phone. Um, I've got one of those little Motorola. Yeah. <laughs> it flips open the same way. You just flip. <laughs> yeah, I've got a flip dude. Yeah. yeah. You just flip it closed as soon as people get close to look at it. Like, what is it? No, no, no. You saw it. <laughs> well, actually, since the since the vasectomy, now it's one of those like it's like the the sidekicks. It just looks. <laughs> I like this running idea that I don't know what a vasectomy yeah. is, and I just got took an advantage of. You woke up in a bathtub of ice and, and yeah. thought you got a vasectomy. Well, I mean, it doesn't work, so. Hey. Eh? 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 <laughs> That's all. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what you're going for. That's all I was going for. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to the next question. Comes from We've Only Just Dandum, uh, who asks, What's with people thinking DC is a dark and gritty universe? Uh, does it just stem from the dark tones of Zack Snyder's DC movies? Um, I mean, no. You, you've probably seen some of those Marvel. You've oh, seen yeah. Marvel movies. Yeah, yeah. Like, do do you do you feel that way? Do you feel like DC is like the grim cousin and Marvel's the fun cousin? It, it's definitely one of those ones where it's like when you're watching the movie, there's way too many dark scenes, and you're actually kind of like struggling to see what's going on. At least Marvel, they'll light stuff up and be like, "Here's what's happening." Oh, you mean like literally? Literally, in terms it's of dark. Like luminosity. Yeah, luminosity. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's how like, many lumens? <laughs> Right, yeah. I love that's the complaint I come in with. Yeah, it's just dark. <laughs> yeah, I, that's yeah. Like, oh, like I can hear this. I can hear the sound, but I I just don't see anything. Did you try turning your TV back on? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but even in terms of in terms of tone, do you feel that way? Well, yeah. Bruising, like, bruising that, that Batman does there. it for me every time. Like, yeah, he seems pissed all the time. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't think that is the fault of those Zack Snyder movies. The Zack Snyder movies definitely play it up, though. Right. Like, the Nolan movies are not especially funny. What's the closest thing to an actual joke in a Nolan movie is probably the Joker going, like, very poor choice of words when he says, like, let her go, and he drops... Or the, the that's probably the, the closest the, the, thing to an actual joke. The in pencil, any of those yeah. The pencil disappearing. That's, like, yeah. I mean, it does make sense that it's the Joker, but yeah. like that's a solid bit. But those, <clears throat> there's very little funny humor, yeah. in those movies. Oh, yeah. Michael Caine crying. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, actually, actually, I did think of Must one wine. in Batman Begins. <laughs> I try, try, try to make oh. In Batman Begins, when the party happens and Rachel Ghoul sort of crashes it and Wayne Manor is burning down and he's trapped under the beam, and then Michael Caine comes out and goes, What's the point of doing all those push ups if you can't lift a beam? Yeah. <laughs> Time to place, Michael. Time I, to play. <laughs> I think that might be the funniest moment of the That trilogy. is actually a really good luck. That's a legitimately good joke in what is otherwise not a funny movie. <laughs> No, that's a that's a good point. Uh, what's the point of doing all those push-ups? You can't even lift them. Up. You princes of Gotham. Yeah. You kings of, of you, New you. Wayne. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I I think because the Nolan movies are such a reaction to the Joel Schumacher movies, which were like nipple heavy, nipple heavy. Bat credit card, yeah. ice puns. <laughs> Batman did seem to have a more of a pep in his step when he could show his nipples, though. Oh, yeah. 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 But, like, those movies are so silly that the Nolan ones were like, if we're going to redo Batman, we yeah. have to take anything fun and silly out of it. Yeah. So it's like, what does Gotham look like? Every other city in America. Like, what? <laughs> Like, just 1980s New York. That's yeah, all you're it's, getting. It's yeah. just like, what does Wayne Enterprises look like? It's a big rectangle building. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, Batman Begins is the only one that actually feels even architecturally close because at least they have the monorail. 
You don't yeah. see that monorail on the other two movies. No, it never comes back. <laughs> no, no, no. It's no. really interesting. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't. So, you know, like there's... I I think you could maybe blame the, <laughs> the Nolan movies. Because uh, even the Batman animated series, though dark-ish in yeah. terms of maturity, is full of jokes mm-hmm. and fun and stuff like that. Batman comics... I've gotten grimmer over time, very 80s, you know, that Frank Miller stuff, the Dark Knight Returns and that sort of, like kind of darkened Batman. So Zack Snyder's movies definitely feed into that, but I don't think you could blame them for it. If you're going to blame someone in movies, I think you blame Nolan. And then you and then you can lay some blame on Snyder's feet for not adjusting, for just leaning in, making it worse, you know, having Batman just like drive the Batmobile into someone's face, which does happen <laughs> in Batman v Superman. He does. <laughs> no, that's a fair diagnosis, Doctor. You know? Yeah, I think that's my perspective on it. I, If you read the comics, I, for a long time, from a comics perspective, I think the roles were reversed. Marvel was all these, like, angsty, pained, tortured characters that was like, I have a power, but it came at a cost. <laughs> and DC was like, yeah, from another planet, and this sun makes me fucking dope. Bang, <laughs> like, pow. You know, like, DC for a long, colorful, outlandish, crazy characters, wacky powers, and Marvel was like, but what if they hated themselves? <laughs> <laughs> like, the comics were the opposite of that. The movies weirdly inverted the full, the whole thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny that way. I mean, the best examples of movies that maybe treat the characters the way that comics have are like the Richard Donner Superman movies with Christopher Reeve strike the right tone. Like they're optimistic and colorful and bright. And like the Marvel, it's a bad movie, but like the Marvel Daredevil movie is maybe suitably self-loathing for the yeah. Marvel comic, yeah. you know? Those are maybe the best examples of the pre It's like the Democrats and Republicans used to have yeah, opposite just, platforms and they switched. switched. It's the same sort of thing in movies with Marvel and DC, I think. Yeah. yeah. Reject the two-party system. Come on, people. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Image, Valiant, IDW. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's uh, leave Facebook and head on over to Twitter. Twitter. And first question comes from Adam Talking Superman, who asks, do you consider Wonder Woman to have Greek heritage? Oh, have you seen the Wonder Woman movie? Yeah, yeah, I have. Based on the movie, do you consider Wonder Woman to be Greek? I, I'm going to lean yes, but I also don't want to give Greek people anything. So <laughs> Yeah, George has taken enough. Yeah. It's such an insight. Just joke. literally it's for us. Only for us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I understand the the idea of thinking Wonder Woman is Greek because she's tied to the Olympian gods. Themyscira is probably somewhere in the Aegean Sea. <laughs> like she's geographically pretty Greek, um, and it's tied just... to their mythos and that. But I think calling her Greek would be insulting because her whole culture is from I mean, a different all, dimension she essentially yeah. before she leaves the island yeah. she's born on the island when they retreat from humanity that would be like calling a macedonian person greek oh they or, love that or, yeah. or, which th- they're such big fans yeah calling a serbian person greek something like, you know calling no, it's a, a catch-all term love it <laughs> you know like she is descended from the same sort of like greco trojan roman sort of Mediterranean yeah. ancestry, but calling her Greek is not correct. It's the same mistake that I uh, that I, I make with that purple video game dragon. Spiro? Spiro? Yeah, Spiro. <laughs> oh, Spiro. Spiro. <laughs> Spiro, the Greek dragon. Yeah. Yeah, instead of fire, you just breathe tzatziki. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Spiro, you make your mother cry. Yeah, it's... Oh, Spiro. <laughs> Opa! <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to the next question. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, I've got a major heart on for this person. Oh, come on. Because it's organ night. Oh, I see. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, who asks, is Batman really the world's greatest detective? I mean, he certainly purports to be. Um, <clears throat> I guess my only rebuttal to that is who else would you put in the running? Like, I mean, Martian Manhunter? So there are other... A detective Chip? There are other prominent detective characters. All right, later on. The question? So, question. Yeah. Martian Manhunter, Detective Chimp, 
Well done, by the way. Uh, I've, the been, al- I've the been doing al- a fucking 164 of these. The Elongated Man, Ralph Dibney. Mm-hmm. He, his nose twitches when he smells a mystery. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, that comic is one page long, and then it's like, and this was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the writers killed themselves. Do you know what? Elongated Story Man done. is like a weirdly beloved comic book character <laughs> by like fans of comics. <clears throat> He's like one that they hold very, very dear. In a funny sort of way. And is different um, than Plastic Man. Slam Bradley uh, is a detective character. Um, <laughs> I think I watched that movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that a Faye Regan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Because <laughs> that's the only one we know. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's just the one. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, no. there, are, there are many detective I know there are many. Yeah. Characters. Yeah. Do we think Batman is the best one? I mean, you and I, Richard, read that Detective Comics 1000 where Batman was the last detective to, to finally figure, join to find that detective guild. Yeah. He finally, he finally figured out all the clues and joined that detective guild that was made up of all the characters we just mentioned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so including Hawkman and stuff like that. Like, yeah. We're in there, you know. Who I wouldn't have thought of being. I think it's because he's like archaeologically uh, uh, sort of a detective because yeah. that's his trade. But still, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do I think he's the world's greatest detective? I think what I said in that episode was, I don't know that he's necessarily the best, but he's the most determined. Oh, yeah. And then that's what... No that, one else will finish a case. That's what that story necessarily, really But Batman showing, finishes yeah. every case. Oh, hell yeah. You know? If it kills him, if it takes him 20 years, <laughs> if he's got to climb a mountain and read an icicle to get a clue, he'll he'll do it. Yeah, I think that makes him a good detective. But the others are just nine to five detectives. They're not taking it home with them. Well, I mean, Batman's definitely taking it He's home. He's taking with it him. home with him, right? Batman doesn't have a good work life balance. I He's, think we can objectively say no, that. I think that's fair. 90% of Alfred's day is just buying things for Batman to smash when he gets home. So is it really <laughs> just <laughs> more vases, uh, uh, Master Wayne? Uh, uh, an- another difficult day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and if we're just saying that it's based on, like, <laughs> if it's just based on his determination, is it is it that he's even a good detective? Like, does he just have like a bunch of like finished cereal boxes lined up that he can't finish the the <laughs> things on the back? Like, Here, here's what I would say: <laughs> Bat- I'm just, get, it's just yeah. it's just a matter of time. I'm gonna get to them. Yeah, Batman, I'm going you, to get you to weird them. purple frog. I'm gonna get you. Batman is weird because he's both the maxim of work smart and work hard. <laughs> he uses computers, yeah, insane yeah. technology. He's very well like learned he knows a lot of different science but he will walk like through glass to get to the other side of the road works yeah. harder than anyone else to basically reach the same conclusion yeah yeah ralph dibney the elongated man is i think a better detective yeah he doesn't work as hard to solve things as yeah. batman does batman puts his body through the ringer and mm-hmm. you know like he hates himself and he's like <laughs> you know like all this kind of shit and i don't think anyone else puts themselves through that i mean martian manhunter Works very smart in that he can read people's minds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Makes detecting very easy. Yes. <laughs> but, like, I would say Elongated Man's a better detective than Batman. I would say Detective Chimp is probably a better detective than Batman, minus the alcoholism. Nah. Um, so, no, I actually don't think Batman is the world's greatest detective. No, I don't think so either. But he's so determined that you kind of have to admire him, I think. Mm-hmm. You'll let him keep the title, I guess. Yeah, yeah. you know, so he doesn't kill himself. <laughs> 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 So he doesn't throw himself yeah. off a cliff in the back. <laughs> Master Wayne really needs this. <laughs> Please, I beg you, just just don't solve this one. <laughs> I, I, I think he's maybe two, three weeks away from it. <laughs> just uh, he re- he really needs a win. Yeah. Uh, he another Robin is dead, and he's having a real tough time with it. We're going through stacks of IKEA plates. <laughs> Just keep them off me today, one more night. Today I caught a meeting, a freezer meal, unmicrowaved. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't th- know what you do about I, that. He, he was crunching his way through a ravioli, and, <laughs> and I, I'm really worried. I'm concerned. He says it, he says it heats up in his mouth, it's fine. <laughs> uh, let's go to the next question. Let's do it. I don't know who this person is, but uh, they go by the moniker JJ underscore Martian. <gasps> I'm not sure who that could be. John John. Oh my God. How did you even figure that out? I'm a detective. I think so. I'm the world's greatest detective. <laughs> yeah, you are, buddy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who asks, is fire a psychological weakness for John or a physical one? It seems very inconsistent. Have you ever heard of the Martian Manhunter? No, but I, I, just on a personal level, it can be both because I'm both scared of fire and it will hurt me. 
I mean, you're not yeah. wrong. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's so, true. So the Martian Manhunter, just to give you a bit of background on him, he's a character that essentially has all of the powers of Superman, and more. <laughs> he's telepathic, can shape shift, can phase through solid matter, can turn <laughs> invisible. Mm-mm. Uh, what else can he do? I mean, those are the big ones. Those are the biggest ones. Yeah. Who does he fight? Uh, <laughs> they they try not to bring him out too much. He's currently the chairperson of the Justice League. Mm-hmm. Um, the Martian Manhunter is insanely powerful. Yeah. Oh the God. only counter to that is that his weakness is so easily is come fire. by. Yeah. It's just what the thing that's almost ever present. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every emergency yeah. has fire. Yeah. yeah. Car crash can't go there. Gen- yeah. Generally, if it's something that they need yeah. him for, it, it, there's probably fire. Let's just put it this way. Martian Manhunter was not at 9 <laughs> That's his one that you, that you think of. He couldn't have done it. Yeah. <laughs> Superman. Huh? <laughs> uh, so Martian Manhunter. Um, but so his thing is he is physically weak to fire. But he's also like psychologically weak to fire because his entire race is made extinct by a plague of psychic fire. Like, using their telepathy, like this fire virus basically spread from Martian to Martian and basically ignited them physically. It started as a te- like a mind thing, and then it would physically ignite their bodies and destroy them. Oh, God. <laughs> and his entire race goes extinct because of it, except for him. The amount of money I'd pay to just be in the writer's room when they're pitching these things. The thing is that this is in the 60s. They were like, yeah, he needs a weakness. And be like, fire? Yeah. <laughs> Literally one guy's like, no, fire, yeah. Like, yeah. How could that come back to haunt us? Do you know what? I'm weak against fire. What if he was too? <laughs> yeah. What other yeah. things are weak against fire? I hurt fire? myself on a candle and I thought, what a great weakness for super. Yeah. Just one guy in the front like, uh, what about water? And then a guy in the back just like exhaling a cigarette. No, like, that wouldn't no. work. <laughs> fire. The opposite of water. Yeah. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> what if he was weak against? Yeah. Wait for it. Air. <laughs> Damn it, Don, you've done it again. <laughs> you brilliant son of a bitch. What what this question is talking about though is sometimes in the comics they make it more of like a he gets physically weak, like loses his powers, like maybe can't fly or something if the fire is around. And other times it's that he sees a fire and he just kind of like PTSD sort of shuts down. Just gets so, scared and can't go. Yeah, it like just can't function anymore. So sometimes it's more psychological. Sometimes it's more physical. I, like I that. think, like your assessment, it's both. A different writer will highlight a different way mm-hmm. or visualize it a different way. But I think it's it's just both. Yeah, it will physically weaken him, and it's also good. At, like it brings up the trauma of watching his entire race <laughs> go extinct. Yeah, no, that sticks with you. I would imagine. I'd have to imagine. Yeah. Explains your relationship with women, I think. It's pretty similar to that. <laughs> it's both based on trauma and the fact that you can't please them. <laughs> uh, it's normal. It's normal. normal. <laughs> your dick's small. I didn't even say that. <laughs> uh, oh, Doc, what's that sound? It must be morning. I, I hear the cry of a donkey. That's right. The next question comes from Braydon. Can't stop the dog. <laughs> you <laughs> maniac. <laughs> oh, Braden. I'm so sorry. Braden. Um, <laughs> when it comes I to. I am Clipton. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Bob, no. <laughs> Braden asks. Uh, twirling, twirling, twirling. <laughs> uh, I'd vote for him. <laughs> when it comes to Superman. Okay. Who is the real secret identity? Right. Kal El of Krypton or Clark Kent of Smallville? Uh, so, so I mean, we the, talked about this with the, Batman. Batman, yeah. Let's let's hash I think it out. It's, I think it's the reverse. You, I think Clark Kent's the real, and he has to become Superman. Right. Connor, what do you think? Yeah, he desperately seems to just want to work at that newspaper and hang out with Lois Lane and not really have any responsibilities. Yeah, which I mean, is I don't like. I, who's the uh, character you daydream about being the most? Oh, probably like the the Flash or something like that. Mine's usually like Spider or not Spider Man, Superman or like Doctor Manhattan. But it's always just like, oh, those are just you gods. About Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, <laughs> I want to be completely disconnected from humanity. Yes. I want to like forget why people matter. Oh yeah, like, like I just want to be lost in time and be like, uh, you know, going down to my girlfriend. I can't also tell you it already yeah. happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
in the future you haven't seen yet, I didn't tell you. So, I'm <laughs> and that's how it's gonna go. <laughs> it's time. What can I tell you? <laughs> so it's. I always Dr. find it funny. Manhattan has like just a douchey boyfriend. <laughs> I mean, he is in that comic a bad boyfriend. Yeah, uh, not supportive. He's like, no, it doesn't matter. You don't matter. In fact, I don't matter. I'm not here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm just a puppet who can see the strings. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I am matter, I guess, but yeah. barely. <laughs> Yeah, only materially better. Yeah. 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 Uh well, I mean, the end of Kill Bill has this has a speech where Bill says that Clark Kent is the mask, that it's how Superman sees us. He says his argument in that movie is that Superman is his powers, they're genetic, that they're yeah. born in him. That's who he is. Clark Kent is how is a reflection of how he sees us, meek and, you know, timid and things like that. Which is I, yeah, I, I feels oh, like I think it says more about Tarantino yeah. than it says about Superman. I think so that, too. I think that is deeply incorrect. Yeah, I really don't agree um, with that. It's a it's a weird it's a weird reading of that Nazi yes. reading of which is maybe the point that Bill is wrong. Yeah, yeah. If we want to give Tarantino credit, maybe he's saying Bill is wrong. Yeah, Bill yeah. doesn't come off as a hero in that movie. No, no, no. definitely not. What? <laughs> oh, no, I've been living my my life by these principles. Oh my god. <laughs> Should I call off my five point assassin squad? Yeah. Um, yeah so um, I don't think I agree with that. So I definitely don't think Clark Kent is a mask. Mm. In current comics, Superman has finally publicly revealed his secret identity. Yeah. Everyone knows who he is. Um, the cop out answer is that he's always been both like it's I don't think either one of them was ever fake his Clark Kent is genuine that's how he was raised by like Ma and Pa Kent just a good Kansas boy you know exactly be nice be hardworking you know do good tell the truth yeah that's his upbringing that is genuine and the Superman part is genuine too a lot of all those things I just mentioned but also you know power and responsibility be a symbol of hope that people will follow you into the sun all of that kind of stuff not follow you into the sun like lemmings, but like, uh, like, like this way, uh, you know, like, like hopefully. <laughs> well, right. Only I can do this. Into the light, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, I, I think he's always been both. I mean, he definitely, he disguises himself both ways. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he clearly doesn't need glasses. <laughs> glasses are, glasses are a choice. That's part of the Clark Kent disguise. But likewise, Superman's maybe confidence is maybe a disguise. I think he's more Clark personality wise probably than Superman. I think they're both true and both masks, right? I mean, that's a huge cop out answer, but Uh, and it's pretty sad too because if Superman can't be confident, like what hope is there for anyone else? How could he be confident though? Lois is so into him as Superman for so long, and all he does is put on glasses and comb his hair, and she's like, "You unfuckable farm boy." She's like. You simpleton. No, no, that has to be part of their relationship. She's got to know it's him, and she's like, no, I'm keeping him on his toes. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or it's like a kink he has. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. he's really just like, yeah, I'm so shitty like this. <laughs> yeah. Not until I put on this leather outfit. <laughs> yeah, you, why don't you break the story before I can? Yeah, yeah. break it. Break yeah. it in half. Yeah, break the story. Yeah. <laughs> break it over my fucking back. I'm so, I mean, I don't I'm like so pathetic. I don't like that we're making this so dirty. <laughs> Show me your byline. Show, yeah. me, your Show byline. me your byline. Oh, go below the fold. Go below. <laughs> wow. I mean, <coughs> they do have a kid. I'm just saying. Uh, they have a kid. Yeah. I they mean, did I, it once. Yeah. I think that's my answer, though. I don't think either of them are no. ingenuine. And now they're all one. Yeah. He doesn't have to pretend at all anymore. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next question. Comes from Dave Rossi. Dave. Dashel, turn off the God, podcast. Dashel. Just please turn it off. This one especially. Yeah. Dashiell is Dave's uh, child who's like nine years old or ten years well, old. This one isn't for him. No. 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 I no. Mean, we no. made one episode for We made one for episode it. that Dashiell can listen to. And oh, nice. It, the episode title is Dashiell Turn On The Podcast. <laughs> and that's the only one. But, but this is the not... only time we ever made a PG 
episode. I really hope he gave you like two stars. Like it wasn't for me. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not our best. Episode. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I think I started bleeding at one point. People say that like lewdness and swearing in comedy is a crutch, and we're both we've got late crippled. Legs. We're crippled. Yeah, we're <laughs> we got... absolutely crippled. <laughs> we need, we need them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolute comic brain poison. <laughs> yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, Dave asks, "What does it mean to be a god in the DC universe, and who then does the specter punch a time card for?" Right. Have you ever heard of the Spectre? No, who's the Spectre? Spectre da, is... Da, 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 da. It, it's the Spectre. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> uh, Spectre is... Uh, basically, he's a character... Uh, D- Jim Corrigan is a detective who dies. In the original, in his first appearance, he dies by being like stuffed into a barrel by the mob, and then they fill it with concrete. And then drop him in the river. He really dies. No, that's a big death. <laughs> yeah. And You're then, all the way dead at that and point. And then his yeah. human spirit is bonded to concrete. what was eventually... <laughs> yeah, he has, gets, gets the power Yeah, of surprisingly concrete. didn't get the power of concrete. He did yeah. get the power of concrete, yeah. Um, it was later sort of retconned that his spirit is bound to a fragment of the essence of God... Essentially, he's bound to God's vengeance. So he becomes this spirit of vengeance, d- like doling out <laughs> divine judgment, essentially. Oh. Again, I want to be in these writers' rooms. Which is <laughs> crazy shit. Yeah. Um, it's fucking so nuts. the Spectre directly reports to what in DC is called the Presence, which is basically like the Abrahamic God, like the, the one God. One true God. And he, uh, got, he got away. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> uh, if you have a moment, I would like to speak yeah. to you a little bit about the Spectre. Yeah. <laughs> have you heard the word of the Spectre? Uh, there's no podcast. It's just you guys bringing me in. Like, okay, so have you heard of a Spectre? Yeah. Oh, no one listens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> These mics aren't plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lock the door. Yeah. yeah. Bring out the paperwork. So Faye Reagan is for no one then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we hook him in with Faye Reagan. Yeah, yeah. The one-two punch of the Spectre and the Abrahamic God. That's right. <laughs> yeah. No, I went to Catholic school. I know all about Spectre. Oh, perfect. There you go. <laughs> It'd be so funny if like a priest out there was like, I, I'm going to ace this test. I've read all the comics. Yeah. He's <laughs> just like, Olympian gods. The, Ramakrishna. The, the presence. The new, the new gods. The, the presence, Spectre. The, the presence, Spectre. Yeah. The Holy Ghost. The yeah. Phantom Stranger. Yeah, yeah there he is. <laughs> In the name of the Spectre, the Phantom Stranger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From the presence. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I love that. Um, so, uh, what does it mean to be a god in DC? Uh, essentially, if you're a god, it means you actually embody part of the thing you're the god of. If you're Aphrodite, if you're the god <coughs> of love, it means you actually <coughs> are... <clears throat> an aspect of love. If yeah. you die, it actually affects the nature of love. Mm-hmm. If you are the God of light and you die, it affects the nature of light, etc., etc. onward and onward. The specter though reports to the presence, which is like the God above God. <laughs> yeah. So that's just God. He goes straight to the top. <laughs> yeah. If you're, he's the CEO. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's chair of the board. <laughs> um, he's, <laughs> Which I think implies he's less powerful than, than he is. But, CFO, something. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, for the Spectre, he just, God is it, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if we're talking about what does God mean, I'll answer this very easy question no philosopher has ever put any time into. Uh, uh, God is God. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy that no one's come up with this. Okay, but what? But what? I'm not trying to shit on your question, Dave. It's just sometimes I, it hits me how ridiculous it is that I'm weighing in on these very deep philosophical things with no credentials. Well, to answer your question, Dave, God is God and moving yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. I have a question you for idiot. you guys. <laughs> but what if God was one of us? Right. Yeah. Like just a slob, like, you know, all of us. Fuck you. Yeah. Trying to make his way home. Back in the heaven on the moon. <laughs> Why does everything you sing have to sound like Jarl Rock? That's the only thing I'm good at. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's it. been a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's he's got a unique talent. Yeah. Comics, whatever, but it's all about the Jarl at the end of the day. I have a gift for you both. And it's I, I consider this You gift, keep saying this and I don't want it. I think this gift is self replicating. Okay. I think you will never be rid of this gift. Just you, wait. Here we go. 
Somebody. No, no, fucking Jesus. <laughs> well, the ears not coming and they don't stop. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'm not going to back to the rules and the hit the ground running. <laughs> One of us. Dinner max size. Fuck off that. Fuck it's it's painful how much I could do the whole, whole song. Um, let's go to the next question. Let's Speaking of God, let's go to our what? Let's God go wrote to, in? No, it's our, our favorite. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't yeah. No. no. Was I right? Is God <laughs> God? <laughs> uh. This is God at God. Um, I heard what you said about me. You fucking take that back. Yeah. <laughs> let's kick this guy's ass. Let's kick this guy's ass. <laughs> you piece of shit. Say that to my face. Um, Say that to the one true face. Of God. My you can't foot. look at my face, can you? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> God is just like a mean bro. <laughs> um, no, this, this dude. Welcome to heaven, psych. <laughs> oh my God, hell! <laughs> there is no heaven. It wasn't even an option. <laughs> It's never been an option. You had no fun in life. You fucking failed. <laughs> you fell for this so hard. Yeah. Sure hope you enjoyed that free will. Yeah. <laughs> now pledge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to pledge to get to heaven. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look how much of a pussy he is. I do my laundry yeah. pledge. Me and a bunch of <laughs> other angels were taped together for three days. <laughs> Jesus came back. We're not doing this anymore. Yeah. Guys, the dean's going to shut us down. <laughs> <laughs> Double secret probation right now. We can't be doing these things. Do you want to go to homecoming or not? <laughs> so, yeah. speaking of God, sure. the next question comes from our favorite religious representative. Oh, Chris Chan. Yeah, Chris yeah. Chan. You guys, you have contact with Chris Chan? Yes. The Chris Chan? Yeah. That's about the only nerdy comic book shit I know is Sonic You. What? Uh huh? Are you guys not familiar with Chris Chan? No. Oh, he was this guy who got. Well, he was like fairly famous in the early days of the internet, and he combined, uh, I believe it was Sonic and Pikachu. Oh no! Into oh, a, no. his own uh, character that he called uh, uh, Sonichu. Oh, is it sexy? <laughs> Does it fuck? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm asking it's, for a friend. <laughs> yeah. The important question: uh. How. What? Does it sexy, fuck? Is it? <laughs> is, I mean, I mean, based on the name, I mean, it's obviously sexy. I mean, I'd want to fuck those things separately. So, I mean, together, how could you not? Yeah, yeah, the electricity and the speed. I mean, yeah. God, I'm hard as a rock already. <laughs> Please, I can only get so erect. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Thank God it's fast. At least it's, it's throbbing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think it's the same, Chris Chan. Chris, did you invent Sonic you? Because. You've been holding out on us this the whole time? Yeah. <coughs> you know the shit we're into. I probably did do now. Uh, I, let's, see, let's see what he asks about. Sure. Maybe, maybe he mentions it. Yeah. Uh, Chris asks, not a question, but a kind of reminder about the often forgotten lesser known fact that mainstream superhero comics is a business. It is for profit with shareholders and characters that we all are corporately owned intellectual properties. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I think maybe the misconception that's being alluded to here is... This is just made for art purposes and nothing else? Yeah, or that, you know, why why wouldn't you do this? It would make sense for the story, yeah. you know? And, you know, I mean, let's be fair. I also get frustrated when things don't make sense for story. Like, this 5G thing that's happening, I think it's fucking stupid because we just got a fix in Doomsday Clock yeah. and Scott Snyder's run. I don't like when things have to be wedged into an event or stuff like that because the events are these, you know, crossover things that go across all the titles so they can sell more books. But yes, I mean, it's it's true. The misconception is that the story should unfold <laughs> naturally or reasonably when really there are economic issues in there you know like comic sales are never that strong yeah you know and there's lots of evidence that the movies don't actually increase comic readership mm -hmm. or at least not in a way that is um easily demonstrable um, i'd say i'm a very anecdotal case of that like i've seen most if not all of these comic book movies and yeah it hasn't I haven't gone out and bought comic books because of it. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe it inspires people to buy a trade or two. 
but to become just like, yeah, I get it every month. I, I just now I just read Batman, or like now you know, I, I don't think there's a huge translation to that. And so, yeah, there are business constraints, and you know, big corporations own these companies now too. So it's not even like they could be like, fine, we're not making a bunch of money, but we love our. our it's like now Disney has demands on Marvel, you know. Yeah, and they're doing it for the Warner's craft. slash AT and T is going to have demands on DC, like that shit happens right like yeah. it's part of it so yeah fair reminder but that, i think that is a misconception that or a thing that is easily forgotten about that these things are not just art you know yes. just pure art the people making them are making them that way but that it's the editorial stuff or yeah. the publishing stuff the stuff from, that comes down from up top it has more of a corporate the chum you mean but, yeah they're just chumming down on that <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go to the next question. Oh, fuck. Um, wow, that good, huh? <laughs> no, it's... Uh, <clears throat> Raging G, he surfs on a mudslide. Raging G, it's been a day since he just cried. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one you've done in a while. <clears throat> I didn't think you were going to stick that. Neither did I. <laughs> that was pretty good. Credit where credit is due. Yep. Raging G. <laughs> yep. It's been a day since he just cried. <laughs> like, it's consecutive. Am I Raging G? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the song's always applicable. He's just crying once a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like clockwork. That's right. Uh, Raging G asks, how many misconceptions were created with the animated series uh, from yeah. Batman, the animated series to even Justice League action? Um, that conflict with the main mainline canon. Uh, also, how many of those became a part of the mainline universe, uh, making them facts and not misconceptions? That's interesting because right. I mean, Joker had a girlfriend. That was well, him. I mean, this is the thing, you know, like the, that we owe a lot to the animated series that is now <laughs> comic mm -hmm. canon. Harley yeah. Quinn's entire existence, the 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 background for uh, Mister Freeze, yeah, Mister Freeze's origin, his yeah. actual tragic origin, not just like yeah, I was a guy and now he I, likes I, I'm he cold. likes it cold, yeah, <laughs> just like, <laughs> yeah, the fact that it's like it's actually yeah. tragic, not a dude with a temperate issue, yeah, like, that. like best puns in the game though, as oh, far as I've seen, yeah. Yeah, but like yeah, bar none. Yeah. I mean, that, comes that's, a, that's a misconception yeah. for sure. Always winterize your pipes. <laughs> Was that a line from the movie? Oh, yeah. That's how he breaks out of Arkham is he freezes the pipes <laughs> and it blows the wall out. Um, <clears throat> when they when Poison Ivy and Bane bring him his suit, he goes, a laundry service that delivers. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just going for the best humor possible. Yeah. The, the historically inaccurate, what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. The Ice Age. <laughs> and you're like, I don't even know where to begin with it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you be cool, bird boy? Um, I would say the misconception is that Mr. Freeze is good at puns. Yes. I don't think the actual Mr. Freeze is anywhere near. I mean, he's got some. He's nowhere near as good at puns as that movie makes him out to be. And that's my real problem with Batman and Robin. Yeah, that's really the only issue. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, spotless. Yeah, Mr. Freeze is not that punny. Just no. um, <laughs> picturing you with your placard in front of it. Like, just yeah. bro, bro. Boo! <laughs> He's not that good at puns. Otherwise, the movie's pretty dope, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His protest isn't taking off. <laughs> <laughs> it's so tepid. Um, yeah, what are other things maybe from the comic, or from the cartoons, rather? Um, that's interesting. Uh... Well, shit. That's kind of tough. I mean, I guess technically some of these things are, like you said, now they've become fact. But the idea of Joker having a sidekick uh, was not true in the comics. Mm -hmm. uh, it started in the cartoon. Uh, the idea of Mr. Freeze being at all a worthwhile character with a background uh, <laughs> uh, is, yeah, started in the cartoon. If you read the comics, you would have been very disappointed in the Mr. Freeze you read before that Heart of Ice episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think even Clayface to an extent, I mean, Clayface's origin isn't exactly the way it is in the cartoon, but the idea of, again, making him tragic and sympathetic and three-dimensional <laughs> and stuff like that, uh, you know, th I think those are things that I guess for a while would have been misconceptions. If you watch the cartoon, you would have been like, I know what a Clayface is. Yeah. You read the comic, you go, 
do I? <laughs> but now they're facts because mm-hmm. they've become canon because they're so good that you can't deny them. You have to That's the version people want because yeah. it's better than what you were doing. Um it's hard to think of one that maybe hasn't gone there yet. <laughs> I guess I like the one, I think it's only existed in the cartoon, but the one where people mistake Booster Gold for Green Lantern. Oh, is that? It's in the Justice League cartoon. Booster Gold is like assigned to like crowd control yeah. <laughs> because they don't think he's a real hero or a good hero. So he's sort of assigned to crowd control. This kid comes up and goes, can I get your autograph? And he's like, yeah, sure. And he signs it. And the kid goes, well, oh, you're not Green Lantern. Oh, that's like, really it's, funny. It's a whole thing. <laughs> like, that's a very, very specific funny one that I like that I kind of wish <laughs> was in the comics. I sort of wish that was a thing where people were like, oh, you're not Green Lantern. <laughs> that's just, really funny. I find that funny. I enjoy that. Um, let's see. What's a good, a good <laughs> misconception? Um, I had one where I was thinking like... Um, because I, you, you said that it was going to be about common misconceptions. And I always yeah. couldn't get over the fact that how on board, like the general populace seems to be with just having superheroes. Oh, and right. It, the big thing was like, I, I, I don't even like being in a store where there's like a cop with a gun. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't grab the gun. Don't grab the gun. Don't, yeah. like, so if like the Green Lantern showed up beside me, I'd be like, don't grab the ring. Don't grab the ring. Don't grab the right, ring. Right, yeah. yeah. It would make you nervous. It would make me nervous all the time. So then like... Did you did you sort of appreciate at least some of what they were trying to do in a movie like Batman v Superman, where yeah. like some of the world is like, is Superman a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I would absolutely be one of those guys who's like, yeah, no, I don't like this, but I'd probably be pretty bereft of, or like of any actions because I'm like, well, he's can kill me. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be out there being like, "Fuck you." Well, yeah, I would let him save me. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, give me pause. There's yeah. a there's a great movie that we watched called uh, Brightburn, which is literally the like, yeah, the dark side of Superman. It's like what happens if Superman came here and, and decided he was going to take over the planet with just a kid with anger yeah. issues. Yeah, Fucking well, and he's sort of like activated, like the ship like activates the kid. Yeah, kind of goes like. Like, you know, like I'm here. Take to over. Just, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fucking. Yeah, it's true. Um, that's a fair one to bring. Especially up. when you're like, oh, Superman's here. What's getting destroyed? Like, yeah, I like I, have this fight in a field. I think go on, anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. I think on that note, the misconception that comes from some of the cartoons, some of the movies, and things like that is that the cops in Gotham hate Batman. Oh my God! No, someone's doing your job. Some of them do, and every once in a while they bring someone in that's like, "I don't know that we need a Batman." But the story is almost always that they go, "I've learned that we need a Batman." <laughs> like that. Cops, my Fridays off means that I don't need a Batman. Batman and the cops have a much better relationship than I think people think they do. Not just Gordon, but I mean, even Bullock, who hates Batman, works with Batman. Like, yeah, yeah. I, so I, I think there is a thing there where. His relationship is probably better than people think it is. And perhaps the relationships to other heroes like Superman. Flash or Superman are not quite as good as they're made out to be. Because Batman does a lot de- less destruction. Like- the Flash is definitely like a local hero. They make a Flash museum in Central City. Like they, mm-hmm. they love him. But like there's definitely people in Central City that are like, I do not like that this guy has this like insane, like multiversal cosmic power. <laughs> That like and he just like zips around. Yeah, yeah. We just yeah. have to trust him to do yeah. good. We have to trust him not to fuck up the timeline. Yeah, we have to, like, <laughs> like, I could have, I could have a kid, and I don't know it because maybe that was in another timeline that's probably changed already. Oh, take that, Diggle. Yeah, you bitch. Hey, yeah. Like, how do you go to your Oliver Starbucks job that. after that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so I, I, I do think there's maybe like a middle ground between like. Metropolis and Central City are not 100% <coughs> on board with their heroes. And Gotham is not 100% not on board. For sure. I, I think that's that's definitely one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Uh, all right, let's go to the next question. Comes from... That goes cray. Ain't it, Jay? Watch the order. Fish filet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was that whip so cold? <laughs> that whip so cold. This whole thing. <laughs> Act like you've never been around, motherfucker, like this. <laughs> I just want you to keep singing until we get to a very specific. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, keep going. <laughs> Got my best friends in Paris. <laughs> Reed, do you know the rest of the song? <laughs> I've, I've, me and a friend of mine, Kelly, we, we learned that the screenwriters for Straight Outta Compton were all white. Oh, yes. And we were picturing, oh, we had God. this idea for a sketch where it's them in the writer's room and then like, 
you're like Ice Cube and Dre come in. They go like, "How's the movie going?" Be like, "Well, we just want to pitch you something." It's like straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube from the group called. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you know the group. Yeah, I mean, you wrote the lyrics. Be like, say the lyric, <laughs> say it, read the scene. Yeah, yeah. Man, just like, <laughs> it's been a long time since I was singing that song. Maybe you could refresh my memory. What are the words? <laughs> just, just yeah, just the idea of all these white guys be like, we're so cool, and they're just like, yeah, I can write this word. Like, we got away with it, boys. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna write it so many times. Yeah, I'm gonna. Pepper this movie with this yeah. word. And then yeah. he says that word to this guy. And then, then he says it back to him. I'm going to Django. Yeah. <laughs> and then I wrote Pootie Tang. <laughs> yeah. There, there is, sometimes I do think about that. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Cray Ghost asks, sure. uh, Power Girl, she's a great character, but everyone just disregards all her character development and seems uh, sees her nothing more than breasts... <laughs> Uh, in universe or out uh it can't be the costume there are and have been worse why does pg get sexually harassed and dismissed more than others i i i think that is power girl so my god yeah <laughs> There's a good story behind so this. Power well, Girl, not good, but there's a there's a yeah, story behind this. Power Girl is technically Supergirl from a parallel Earth. Yeah, an adult version <coughs> of Supergirl, Kara Zor El, Superman's <coughs> cousin, from a parallel Earth where cotton is in short supply and they can't uh, make actual. Uh, <laughs> 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 there was a thing where I I don't remember the exact setup of it, but the artist was basically decided he was just going to draw her boobs bigger and bigger. Until someone told them to stop. And it took weeks. I like, <laughs> like months of issues. I like to imagine him drawing like it, it uh, like tits out, you know? Like not, <laughs> like not start, start with the start tits. With the tits and be like, be like, oh, let's put a person around this. <laughs> that's like the tutorial. They'd be like, so you're drawing Power Girl. We're going to start with the tits. Yeah, it's like, we're <laughs> just- <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, she's got that boob window in her uh, costume. Or she did. She doesn't anymore. But uh, she had that boob window in her costume. She's stacked but she's also like crazy muscular in most versions she's almost like a wonder woman with just like an insane porn star boobs um wow that was a heavy swallow you just did <laughs> oh i just <laughs> i'm ready to talk about it <laughs> i mean i just know ag- aggressively muscular is is it's definitely where you like listen i've discovered stuff about myself doing uh-huh. this podcast i know and like uh a, a, it's, a it's, muscular woman that can put me in my place or a, is, is kind of my thing. Or a female lion. <laughs> Listen, Wonder Woman, Power Girl, Black Canary, Big Barda, have my number. Yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> this is just horny talk therapy. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Welcome to the show. God, I've never been more. I've never been more seen. <laughs> um. Horny therapy. But Power I think Girl, is really I think the- for a long time, because of stuff like that, and because she was clearly drawn as eye candy for so long, it, it, they sort of like her character was sort of disregarded. When they did like the big Crisis on Infinite Earths, they got rid of the multiverse. Yeah, they didn't even bother to give her like a good back. They didn't explain how she still existed. They were like, uh, I don't know. They didn't even say whether or not she was Kryptonian anymore. They were like, uh, she's probably not. Her boobs it's, have always been here since the like, beginning yeah, of time. Uh, maybe it's magic. Maybe I don't know. She's uh, she's fucking strong. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like look at her. What does it matter? <laughs> it was sort. She hey, was primordial she, titties over yeah, here. That's been right. here forever. Yes, yeah, she, she was. They sort are the. Of, they are the. Each one has got a different name. It's the Alpha and the Omega. <laughs> Good God. Yeah. Um, speaking of God, the Alpha and the Omega. Uh, <laughs> speaking uh, of my mom. What? I really like Mill Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I'm such just, an uncomfortably good joke. I'm just picturing like a nice spin off podcast with like Dr. DP. Like, <laughs> oh, God. Hey. April. April's coming. <laughs> 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 We've been doing this too long together. Oh my god! Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I think I think she did become sort of a write-off. I think people didn't care about her as a character. I think there's been a concerted effort in the last, you know, ten, twelve <coughs> years or so, to give her back her Kryptonian background. Yeah, 
to give her an actual story, actual mm. character, to cover up the boob window, yeah. to draw her more reasonably. Um, but I think if you're just mm. passingly familiar with the character, you probably still just picture giant rack, boob window. You, you maybe don't know anything else about Power Girl. I think that's fair. As a misconception, I mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, for a lesser known DC character, she is, she does have her own porn. <laughs> Well, this is the thing. I think disproportionately to how many people know about the character, there's a lot of Power Girl porn. <laughs> oh, that's true. I mean, I just found out about her tonight, and that's all I'll be doing for the rest of my life. <laughs> I probably, I showed you that picture, and you're like, oh, I've seen that. Yeah. You're like, Do, have I read a comic? Is that oh, my phone? Oh, no. Yeah. No, I haven't read yeah, a comic. Yeah. You found that on my blog. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> she had a name? See, but this is her costume now. They've covered up the window. They gave her back. Oh, like, yes. Very the conservative. Super crest. Very conservative. It's better. <laughs> it is better. It's considerably better. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a fair one to bring up. Poor Power Girl. She is a dope character. Uh, all right. Uh, let's leave Twitter and head on over to Instagram. Now we're going to Instagram. Take some questions and answer them. It's the gram. <laughs> oh, whoa. God, he's really trying to vie for a spot on this show because it's working. Just that coveted third spot. We've, yeah. We've never had a third spot. No, on this never. Show we've never had a third spot in this show. And don't ask questions about don't you it. Don't fucking ask any questions. And goddamn it's normal. I just, I, it's normal. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Uh, speaking of harassing people, uh, the real Josh Gill. Ah, uh, Gill. Oh, sexy, sexy Gill. Gil. I realized you told me which episode of ours that you listened oh, to. Oh, yeah. Gill Heavy. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, it's a pretty thirsty one for Gil. <laughs> it was great because uh, yeah, Richard is like, yeah, if you want to like kind of get the tone of the show, you should listen to this episode. I I even, you told him to listen to that episode. I didn't even realize which one that was because I told Richard today. I was like, I listen, I re-listened to the episode to hear what you heard, and yeah. I was like, oh, it's the one where we go all in on Gil, yeah. filled to the gills. I think was Gil my favorite. Yeah. Gil to the rim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, Richard has long been thirsty for Josh Gill, and now I'm just embracing it. The guy posts thirst traps, and so he's asking for it. He does not it. post thirst traps. He's yep. just, he just works out. He just takes care of himself. You're just I, not used to it because you usually hang out with me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not a thirst trap. How's that a thirst? He's wearing clothes. Don't ask how I pulled that up so quickly. <laughs> it's, your, it's your home screen. <laughs> you, you don't even have apps on your phone. You know what, where, just, wherever Josh Gill is, it's home. I mean that's that's beautiful. No. Yeah, no, I'm a gill head now. Yeah, yeah. right. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. It's just goddamn sexy gill. Uh, Josh asks. I mean, does it even matter? Head to gill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Josh Hub. Uh, <laughs> dot net. Uh, Josh asks. Hunter Zolomon isn't actually able to tap into the speed force or negative speed force. Yet he is commonly mistaken for a speedster. Right. Fufu. Uh, I love playing this game with people that don't necessarily oh, yeah. fully read the comics or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, did you understand any of that question? No, no, that was a spell I just heard. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like Latin. Yeah, <laughs> Spiritus Santos. So, so there are lots of characters who are fast. But speedster is a specific designation. It refers to a character that can access this thing called the speed force. Is Flash in that? The Flash can do that. <coughs> Wonderful. Flash accesses the speed force. It's an extra dimensional energy that allows him to break <coughs> the laws of physics and sort of traverse space time. Can Superman do that, or is he just regular speed? He's just fast. Just regular fast. Just yeah. regular fast. Okay. He's normal. He's normal fast. <laughs> yeah, it's normal. <laughs> So Superman, regular speed, Flash, speedster. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Flash has a sort of lineage of... There have been many people that have been the Flash, and there's a lineage of characters that have been what are called reverse Flashes, like they're arch enemies. Uh, the, the main Flash, Barry Allen, his reverse Flash uses something called the negative speed force, which is... It's uh, like the speed force, but it calls you a little bitch before you do it. Well, it's it's like a corrupted version. You can't run that fast. Yeah, yeah you can't fucking it's run the, that fast. That's mm. just that's just the neg speed force. Oh, okay. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> be like, <laughs> hey, nice tights. Oh, just look it on my is, floor. Is that as is, <laughs> is that as fast as you can go? 
It's like, normal. Well, I guess you're not that fast. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Flash, I've never heard of you. <laughs> uh, so the negative speed force is like a version of the speed force, but it make it because it's like corrupted. It makes you immune to changes in the timeline. Yeah. So Reverse Flash can go back in time, fuck shit up, and he is fine. He becomes like a living paradox. Mm-hmm. The Flash goes back in time and changes something. It ruins everything. <laughs> um. Hunter Solomon is a later reverse flash. He technically, at least for a bit, yeah. didn't use the, either of the speed forces. His thing was that he he became like disconnected from time. He could manipulate time around him. So instead of actually running fast and using the speed force, running. he could affect the flow of time. So... Yeah, run, Hunter. Uh, Running, and he was running. (laughs) You're so Uh, Yeah, so Hunter Zolomon, for uh, his initial run, he was just affecting the flow of time. It would basically, from an outside eye, it looked identical to being a speedster. It looked like he was just running fast, but really he was affecting the time around him it's a workaround it's a workaround okay and if any physicists out there will be like that doesn't make any sense space and time are one thing you can't affect one without affecting the other he's he is running fast <laughs> like um but now in the comics hunter zolomon is connected to the speed force that we just finished a whole arc in the comics where hunter zolomon made Two flashes race against each other to break the force barrier to unleash the other forces, the strength force, the sage force, and the still force. Mm -hmm. Um, And he is connected to the speed force now. But for a while, yeah, technically he wasn't. He was like just a time guy, basically. (laughs) Terrible name. Well, yeah, that's why he picked Zoom instead of time guy. That's a little on the nose, but... yeah. I'm time guy. Yeah. Like workshop. And you're out, out of it. <laughs> Punch. <laughs> Pow. <bang. laughs> I could write a comic. <laughs> sure you can, buddy. All you people that said I wasn't good enough. <laughs> I just came up with time guy. You stupid fuckers. <laughs> Don't you have egg on your face now? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the dumb prick now? <laughs> Uh, all right, let's leave Instagram and head on over to email. Check it, check it, the email. Hope it's from a female. Uh, who asked? Is you're, it? You're not a Homestar Runner person, eh? No. <gasps> no, good. Yeah. Uh, neither am I. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What? Yeah. Who said that? Let's go. Let's go get some. Your chicks. dick's small. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want a cigarette? So cool. Um, negative dick force. Negative dick. Force. It's a normal dick force. You know. I don't like the words dick and force. Uh-huh. No, that's not nice. I don't. I don't. I'm not into it. Yeah, no. I recant that one. Okay, yeah. I'm not editing any of this. Um, email comes from Ben. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, who asks? So weird to just have a name. A name? I know. Yeah. And every time I'm like, yep. Where have you been all my life? Wow. Yeah. Uh, What's Josh going to think? You, ju- you jumped qu- ship so quickly. Josh over is, to Ben. Josh is a cuck. He's into it. Um, You're the cuck. You fucking incel cuck. <laughs> this, I think, is the most off the rails we've been in a while. It's, it's true. Um, ben asks, uh, <laughs> I see it with such animosity. Fucking Ben. Get what do you ben, want, Get ben? more of a name. <laughs> um... <laughs> Three letters. What are you trying to prove? That's what you're working with? Yeah. <laughs> what are you trying to prove? <laughs> my name's just as good. It doesn't matter that I have eight letters in my name. Yeah, it's normal. Uh, ben asks, people always complain about Superman being too powerful and, be, and, it, uh, and being boring. I disagree. What do you think? How do you feel about that one, Connor? I mean, you've probably seen enough different versions of Superman. Do you think Superman is a boring character? That's a thing that's thrown out a lot. No, no. And it, I, I think it's really because I've already copped to this, but he's the one I kind of daydream about being. Like, it's either right. him or Dr. Manhattan. And maybe that says something about me. <laughs> is maybe it just I'm boring. The, 
Power are you have a god complex? Like, oh, do you just want the powers of Superman, or do you see yourself like do you daydream of being as good as? No, he is? no, it's the powers. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I would be corrupted immediately by <laughs> yeah, that. Right. I would have like a, I'd have a day of lofty goals. Like yeah. I'm gonna save people. Yeah. I'm gonna, ha- and they would just all go to shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, uh, there's one other superpower. Like uh, the biggest superpower I always wanted was uh, that one um, uh, jumper. You guys ever see that movie? Oh, like, oh. like Nightcrawler, like a yeah. teleportation kind Absolute of thing. Absolute dog shit movie, Hayden Christensen. But oh yeah, just I was always enthralled by that. I was like, you could just go that into movie. A bank. That's why I wanted that movie to be good. Yeah, I was like, great, great, great idea, great concept. Yeah. yeah. Dog shit movie, <laughs> just complete. Pile it's of not dog often shit, that yeah. jumper comes up. No, no, which no. is it's kind of a superhero movie. Yeah, yeah. But like you could pop up so, behind your friend, pop yeah. in the back of the head, you're gone. <coughs> yeah, things like that. <coughs> right. Interesting. Uh, so you don't think Superman is a boring character? No, because some people like look at that sort of host of powers and they go, "How could you be interesting? You could solve everything." I get it. This it, guy. It does kind yeah. of sound like a, like a five year old where it's just like, "And I can fly." And I got laser rides. And, and I can super fly. ventriloquism. Yeah. <laughs> it's and it's a just real like, thing. I don't want to play this game because I never seem to win. Like you yeah. have everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's... So, so what makes him not boring to you then? I mean, he has everything. Like, <laughs> it's literally oh, just so. The it, same. So it's the other thing. Yeah. It's, it's, that... it's the inverse. It's like he can do anything. Right. Yeah. So you're always waiting for them to reveal another power. Yeah, like, like what of course a... he could do it. Let's see what it is. He's Superman. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. You don't get a name like that without being good. I mean, that's. I mean, that's a fair point. There's something kind of fun about that. Yeah, like I, I think really the only thing that constrains him is like, uh, yeah, he's trying to be a good guy. If he wasn't, the, oh, the be even sky's better. the limit. Be even better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> For a while, the new Fifty Two Superman. That's how got, you get Mark. That's how. That's how you get uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, Ozymandias. Like, yeah. yeah. Just so, go go like three miles up, pick a guy, and make his head explode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, what happens? <laughs> right. Maybe not the spirit of Superman. It definitely isn't. I, I'll, <laughs> I'll cop to that. <laughs> Also, he never said he liked that part about him. Um, th- for a bit in the New 52, that Superman got a power called the Super Flare, where if he if he let loose too much of his like heat vision, it triggered a secondary power where Superman is basically like a big solar battery. He absorbs yeah. the yellow sun radiation. Yeah. It's what gives him his powers. Yeah. If he use too much of his heat vision, it would trigger this secondary power called the super flare where every cell in his body would unleash the solar radiation basically Whoa. as a nuclear explosion. <laughs> and then he would be human for 24 hours. Whoa. But he could basically like his refractory annihilate. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He Once he blew his load. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, he, and then he'd be like, I, I'm, I'm too tired. I'm going to take a nap. Yeah. 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 I'm done being a yeah. bomb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Daddy's got to roll over here. <laughs> so, uh, and he would do that, basically, which is kind of an insane power. That was a relatively recent development for him. See, I'd never heard of that power, and I love him even more now. Yeah, like, that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, you you would enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Now, Richard, you do think he's boring because oh, of the yeah. powers. Now, yeah, why is absolutely. that? Absolutely. Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> um no, for for me, my my favorite stories are always the ones where he's not using any of his powers. It's always like his like introspective, like esoteric, like uh, 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 issues right. where where he's like trying to like comprehend uh, uh, his humanity. And I always find that that's way more interesting to me than like oh oh he's good going to smash against the other thing and then they're going to... But I think that in itself almost disproves your point because you are saying you do find Superman interesting. You just like a different thing about him than Connor does. No, no, no. I'm saying that the... the, (laughs) Yeah, you like Coen Brothers Superman. I I think that the being too powerful... (laughs) Oh my God, I'd watch that. Um, (laughs) uh, The God, he could make Superman for all... They could make Superman for all seasons in a heartbeat. Here's my question for you, Richard. Do you think that those Superman stories where they do sort of bring him down to earth, they do sort of look inward a bit would hit as hard if he wasn't being brought down from such a high height of his power yeah like yeah you still yeah yeah because i think what's interesting is that he's an alien and he's trying to deal with his humanity it's not necessarily isn't part of the thing that he is so godlike that it's it's astounding that he's as human as he is i I mean it's it can contribute to it but I, i don't think that's like the main reason for me right yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I don't agree that Superman is boring. The powers thing never really bothered me because the best Superman stories are the ones where his powers only get him so far. Yeah. You know, that's why Lex Luthor is a great villain. Like, yeah, maybe Superman can punch hard, but Luthor's always got a device or a trap, some sort of dampener, or a like 
two things are happening at different sides of the planet. You can't be in two places at once. Like, oh, God, I love those. Like, those yeah. kind of things. There's always something else. The best Superman stories are the ones that basically say your powers will help, but you have to get yourself out of it. It's something about you that's going to win the day, yeah. not the powers. And, I, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think it's a... I think it's a I think it's a a cop out people use when they aren't when they can't figure out how to do a good Superman story to say he's boring. Yeah. All those filmmakers that are like, I don't want to do Superman, he's boring. It's like <laughs> then you're either like too lazy to put in the work or you don't know enough about the character to do it properly, and that's why you think that it can't be done. Yeah, yeah. a godlike alien. What's interesting about that? Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we hate that. We hate being beyond ourselves. Yeah, not for me. But also, he's like he's he is unhumanly good. Yeah. We you know like there's I think that's the it's most really one of his secret powers. That's the most interesting thing about him is that all of that he's the one. No, no, he can fly too. He's the. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Fuck the goodness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he can fly. But you know, he's like the one character that absolute power does not corrupt. Absolutely. That's yeah. the most crazy thing about him. yeah that's interesting that's not boring the fact that we find it boring is probably describes the hellscape that we live in right now like we have lost our way yeah, we're yeah. like oh no it's not sexy to be good why don't we put a bunch of kids in cages <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know like yeah you're going through the list of his powers and it's like and he's insanely good you're like not believable like that's yeah. Yeah. no no the world is bad yeah what if he like slaps women on the ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can only. Yeah, I think, the limit I, think to my it says, I think it says so more about us if we think Superman is boring. <laughs> Richard, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I'm turning this podcast off. Little piece of good news. Yeah, Weinstein got convicted today. He's guilty officially. Not just that we knew it happened, but now a court has also said yes, it happened. Why are you putting it in a position where I can't make a joke about this? Well, why would you make a joke about it? It's just saying it's good news. Yeah, that's unabashed good. Yeah. 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 Thumbs up. Yeah, but... Did you see the uh, the drawings they did of him in court, like where they were handing around like nude drawings of him? I think it was a photo, but they did like a court stencil. I of, did like, not, no. Google it because he I'm did... I'm all right. No, no, you need to Google it. I'm all right. <laughs> Close all of your Faye Regan tabs. Open up one <laughs> extra tab. I want Faye That's Re for the power, girl. I want girl. Faye Regan to play him in the <laughs> porn parody. <laughs> That might oh be the god. Most oh horrific god. thing I could imagine. <laughs> Still doing all of those terrible things. Oh, but she's got the chops. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if anyone could pull it off. <laughs> okay. Look, I get it. She's best known for, right? Her acting chops. She's so method. <laughs> I, I, I get her him going to jail is a good thing. Yeah. He's a did, did there, you cannot have a butt to this. He did a terrible thing. If you thing. say a butt, we have to edit it out. Because there's no way there's a butt to this. But I heard he can fly. <laughs> Not the way, not the way he was leaning on that fucking walker. <laughs> oh, that was great! Like I can't go to like, jail. Oh, little old me, I couldn't hurt anybody. <laughs> Fuck you. Anyway, on that good note, let's move on. To the let's next leave email and go to the last question on Reddit, where everyone's nice and no one's ever mean. Sorry, I was just down in my drink. <laughs> so I gotta get through one more. Yeah, Daddy's gotta forget. <laughs> yeah, jeez, the doctor needs to take his medication. <laughs> common misconception is that i'm happy <laughs> that's that's not a misconception no 160 no. some episodes and they're like oh he's joyful yeah no that's that's never been a thing someone thought the misconception is that i think people don't know yeah <laughs> there it is yeah uh this last question comes from stump chunkman step into the stump stump, stump chunkman, chunkman. Bam! the chunk oh, see look yeah. 103.7, the chunk. <laughs> chunk, 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 chunk. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Me so horny. We're throwing up the greatest hits of the 80s and 90s. The <laughs> chunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the idea of a vomit themed radio <laughs> station. <laughs> but just nationwide. Spewing like. <laughs> out the greatest hits. Oh, did you catch the chunk last if night? If you got to spew, <laughs> spew into this. The chunk. 103.7. Hey, chunk. hey, hey, chunk, how you feeling? Better. <laughs> better get a bucket because I'm going to throw a b -b -b borderline unlistenable. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> Good God. Oh, uh, last it. question. Stump asks, some live ab- adaptations say Raz al Ghul, oh. uh, while others say Raish al Ghul. Right. Who's right? So, Liam Neeson's character in Love Batman him. Begins. Uh, yep. I really who, who I, better to play a man of Arabic descent? I, 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 I really like the way that they. Uh, it's like, uh, you ever see the Highlander? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like yeah, Sean, Sean Connery yeah, is Spanish. Uh, okay. like, like full Scottish accent. Yeah. It's a show about Scottish I'm from war. Madrid. Yeah. No, I'm Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> We're an ancient lineage that has nothing to do with Scotland, even though the movie's called Highlander. Yeah. <laughs> Which clearly about that. So I And you're Highlander? wielding a fucking claymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Roz yeah. versus Raish. Yeah. I really like the way that he answers the phone for Fraser. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that was the late. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I have a story about Fraser for you. Oh, good here. God. That fucking... Um, okay. <laughs> I can't fucking say what so, they're coming up. in Batman Begins, in those Nolan movies, they call him Ra's al Ghul. All the way through. Everyone says Ra's al Ghul. Even he says, <laughs> I'm Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. In the cartoons, in what I would consider to be more definitive versions, he's called Raish al Ghul. Yes. Spelled exactly the same. Just pronounced differently. In... Arrow, they did this thing where like people on the inside would call him Raish and people on the outside would call him Raz. Yes. Well, like my friends call me Raish. Which, which yeah. was basically their way of being like, we also don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, um, I, I am convinced the pronunciation is Raish. Based on? Based on it's cooler. <laughs> there and it is. I, <laughs> and I feel like I've read something somewhere that was like, that's closer to like what an Arabic pronunciation would be. Oh, okay. I could be deeply wrong about that. Something about Ra's al Ghul just sounds like someone misreading it. That uniquely Irish name, Ra's al Ghul? <laughs> yeah, Ross. Yeah. It's Ross. not Ross. It's, yeah. it's Ross. Ross. Yeah, Ross. Ross al Ghul. <laughs> I like his friend Chandler. <laughs> oh, I'm from the League of Assassins. <laughs> and I was on a break. I prefer... <laughs> Our... Batman, we were on a break. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Pivot, Batman, pivot! <laughs> Could I be any more brooding? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Chandler Batman. You've signed up for this. <laughs> Ross Hell Ghoul. Chandler Batman. And Ross Al- Alfred doesn't share food. <laughs> oh my jo- god. Joey Alfred. <laughs> Alfred Triviani. <laughs> Alfred Triviani. <laughs> Master Wayne, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ross, I, I really like that that monkey you got. Wait, wait, Bruce M. Wayne? Your middle name is Muriel? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's a deep cut. <laughs> that's a deep wow. cut from a friend's heads out there. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there's everyone is screaming at their uh, like uh, speakers, and there's one person who's like, "Nice, nice." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a thought about the pronunciation of Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul? I trust Liam Neeson. I trust that he did the work, and I trust that he looked into it. There, there well, you go. Yeah. I mean, I if walked, anything, I walked up and down the streets, <laughs> <laughs> look, trying to figure out how to do that name. <laughs> Did you see that weird interview that oh, he did? Man. Yeah. <laughs> he was it's outrageous. Where he was walking around with the club looking to beat up some Batman bastard. <laughs> yeah. Like, <isn't> that- <laughs> yeah. Any, any Batman. Any bastard. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> looking for a Batman. <laughs> that's what. That's the thing. Is they just misheard him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, no, I meant Batman. Batman. You know. Like a dark guy, like a dark knight. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he should have pivoted. <laughs> I love the idea that his publicist is like, we can save this. Yeah. <laughs> say it with Batman. Yeah. Liam, say it with me. Dark knight. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So you say, you say <laughs> Raz al Ghul. Richard, what do you say? I, I've been saying Raz for, forever. I think I, I, I started. You fucking Luddite. <laughs> It's normal. I say Rachel Go. I'm going to be elitist about it. Oh, you mean the guy who says Aquaman? Yeah, I'm not big. I'm not a. That's how you pronounce it. 
Look up the Great Vowel Shift. Canadian pronunciation is Aquaman. If you're American, you say Aquaman. Aquaman. This is an actual... Yeah, and if you're possibly Spanish, it's Aquaman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think and if you're French, it's L'homme de O. <laughs> the French don't have superheroes. No. They've got fucking Tintin, yeah. 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 That's as super as they I get. I mean, he's Belgian. Tintin's Belgian. Like, yeah, they don't get one. They get yeah, a Belgian exactly. one. Yeah, that's the closest <laughs> they get. Fun fact, the the Batman of Paris is called Night Runner, and he's a parkour Batman. Not a surprise. Very cool. Yes. <laughs> really impressed Connor there with that fact. Oh, my God. If you liked that, just wait until I tell you about the rest of Batman Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, we. I feel like we didn't. Connor, answer that. do you want to hear me do all the lantern oaths? Um, <laughs> this is why he doesn't have friends. Hello, no, you're do a you married, want to hang out after this? You're a married man with children, yes. Uh, Somehow, with, with child. Oh, yeah. right, one child. Yeah. yeah, one child, and then I got my dick cut off in a van. <laughs> you know, a vasectomy. A vasectomy. You might say <laughs> a vanectomy. It's, a, it's all vasectomy. <laughs> 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 well that's the last regular question all right uh but we do have something that'll lead into the next part okay uh this comes from anthony bois bose probably bose or like like bus bus <laughs> it's, it's like actually like, anthony bus antonio bus this is my hey my name's antonio should i explain <laughs> Should I explain the segment first, or do we do this well, the, the, well, let's do this part first. Okay. I have a dial doc for you. It's a villain based on one of Richard's most hated things. The villain is called Low Voltage. Oh, uh, no. I don't know much about Low Voltage. Low, low T, on the other hand. <laughs> I didn't know too much about that. Uh, and he has the ability to reduce the power of electrical devices. He can't do anything with the power, but it's great for knocking out Hero's gadgets, car batteries, and right. Richard's smoke alarm late at night. Just, did Anthony just say he was going to bring out <laughs> 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 they could have stopped if they had all the clues. <laughs> so, Dial Doc, thank you, Anthony. Low voltage. This is the segment that we're in right now. So the Dial Doc, it's based on this thing called Dial H for Hero, <coughs> which was a comic from back... And back in the day, they would get people to write in. And the idea was you have this magic H dial, and if you dial Hero into it, it turns you into a never-before-seen hero or a villain. Just a random character with a punny name. That only exists for power. this one issue. It was basically their way people would write in and be like, I want a guy with tanks for arms. And you would never write a full comic about that. But God you could do it, it for <laughs> a few pages. So that was sort of the premise of Dial H for Hero. So every week we come up with Since a Dial like Doc. Since like episode 60-something? Yeah, we've been doing it for basically 100 episodes. Yeah. Uh, we come. We each come up with a character. I'm never prepared for this segment. Literally, never. I never have one before I walk into this room. Yeah. So, Richard, why don't you go first? Sure. We'll give Connor the maximum amount of time to think of something. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll we'll go that way. Okay. My character's name is Corpse Protector. Corpse Protector. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 They have the ability to protect and save anyone as long as they've already died. Oh, okay. So they can only protect their corpse. Yeah, their body. They can save their body from a burning fire or from only an... if they've already died from yeah. smoke inhalation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so someone's met- like, oh my God, you saved my cat. Oh okay. no, it's corpse now, protector. Now is, the, is there like an in-universe, like, is there a benefit to having your corpse protected as opposed to like, like, it does it do something for you in the afterlife for you to have an intact corpse as opposed to your corpse being consumed by the fire? No, like, but I, I is guess... Is this hero serving any purpose, I guess is my question. There's, because of him, there's a lot of open casket funerals. <laughs> True, not a lot of grieving mothers. Yeah, I helping mean, not with necessarily. The grieving mothers. They could be all mangled. He's just basically Well, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it depends how they died, I guess. <laughs> I just like the idea of a mother being like, he but, saved my child. Oh, no, it's corpse protector. Wh- right. So we're <laughs> saying that this this person only protects bodies, not souls. Yeah. Does not prevent death. No. Just protects your body. literal shell. Yeah. And that there is literally no value to that. It is not currency in the afterlife or anything like that. Well, so I guess this person if you, serves zero purpose. I guess if you sunk in a ship, corpse protector would be great. People could at least get your body like so they, they could have a funeral. Closure doesn't count as value. 
<laughs> that's the truest thing to your person that that's ever spoken. <laughs> I have it in my will that I want to. I want to just be like basically put in the forest with a seed on top of me, so that I'm just compost. Is that for real? Yeah, it's literally in my will that I, I want. I want like or one of those tree pod things, whatever's cheaper. Is basically just like make me a tree. Essentially, is in my will. <laughs> but like your actual body, like not not like cremated or anything. It's I mean, no, no, not no. Cre- no, no. Just oh, your- did I say? I don't think I said cremate. I think. Oh, I think it's a pretty specific thing to know. I think I just said put my body in the ground. Just those words. Yeah, and I said unmarked, I think, too. <laughs> it's going to be great when a bunch of like uh, Stand By Me kids have a nice coming-of-age tale to go look for your body in the woods. <laughs> I, I will tell you, there's that Netflix show, uh, Be this Careful. This weirdly verdant part of the forest, but what, what could have led to that? I've been, I've been adamantly... <laughs> I've been adamantly we against... We cut a bone inside. <laughs> um, I've been adamantly against cremation after watching that fucking Netflix show, Dracula. Oh, man. No, thank Fuck. you. Fuck. Why? What's wrong with cremation? Oh, my well, if you God. become a Dracula and you get cremated, you look real nasty for, I think, eternity. Yeah, if yeah. I, but also... Is it Netflix Dracula? It's really good, yeah. I didn't even know about this. Yeah, yeah, it's really Spectacular. good. Spectacular. Yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. It's only okay, like three well, episodes. It's that. like a fucking Sherlocky kind of vibe. Oh, nice. I, it's it's written by what's his name? Uh, but Sher- it's that like BBC style, like ninety minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. it's it's sure. Oh fuck, that sounds dope. Doctor Who Sherlock guy wrote it. Yeah, Moffat. Yeah, Stephen Moffat. Stephen Moffat wrote it. Yeah. Um, but there's a whole thing where like some people just wake up and but can't move their bodies after they die, and so they're stuck inside their bodies. But if they get burned alive, they can still feel it. Oh fuck! It sounds like they need the corpse protector. Boom! How dare you salvage <laughs> oh, this character? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Fucking right, okay, corpse so protector. I have a character. Okay. My my dial doc. He's called Slapdash, and what Slapdash is able to do is run at super speed, <laughs> but only if he keeps slapping people in the face. So the, so that's how he does he gain momentum by hitting yes. people. Like yeah. It's like when you like turn those like wheels on the car and you keep pulling it back and then it gets yeah flat. those like toy cars yeah, yeah, exactly yeah yeah. yeah 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 so if he's able to slap a bunch of people in a row then he gets to go crazy fast and for a long time if he only gets to slap one person he goes a little fast for a little ways but that's that's what, what what if he slaps like a, a like one person a whole bunch of times right before he starts running. Well, yeah, I mean, I think you could do it where you slap them and then you, like, hook around and slap them again. You could oh, build nice. up on one person. I think that's how you would take down a villain because then you're getting faster and faster. Oh, They're less yeah. and less likely Exponential. to be you. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's slap That's dash. fucking science. Yeah. It's no corpse protector, so but it's pretty good. So basically, the slap convert like con- like super powered like converts and exponentially increases the kinetic energy of the slap and turns it into running momentum. Wow. Yeah. Well, that was... That's Slapdash. That's a weirdly good one for me to come yeah. up with. And not based on anything in the room for once. Well, except for the idea that you very quickly put together that idea. Slapdash. Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> but otherwise... Blow up my fucking spot, why don't you? I'm sorry, yeah, otherwise that was just... That That was a brick wall. There was no Your way to see through that. dial dock is small. <laughs> <laughs> it's normal. It's a pretty good dial dock. I mean, on me, it looks small. <laughs> Uh, Connor, do you have one? Madcap. Madcap. Oh, all okay. right. Uh, he has a hat that can turn into any other hat. <laughs> <laughs> right, so if he's like trying to break into a bank and instead of a retinal scanner, they've got a, a hat scanner, yeah. he can make it whatever hat he, he needs. I mean, if he's walking down the street and then he has like, boom, a uh, policeman's hat, they're like, oh, I guess he's just not... Has oh, he's just a guy yeah, in yeah. jeans and uh, the, the man, the myth, the legend T-shirt with a policeman. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, he, he didn't finish dressing. <laughs> I guess he's a plain clothes cop. He walks onto a ship and boom, giant admiral's hat. The big. Oh yeah, you <laughs> get the tricorn. Like yeah. That. <laughs> Sir, this is a military ship. This is not. Yeah. Yar, not anymore. <laughs> Madcap. I'm the captain now. <laughs> I'm the madcap now. <laughs> Good God. Wow. Madcap. Madcap. I love that. So it's that. a hat that turns into any other hat. Any other hat you want. Can you take the hat off him or is it like fused <laughs> to him? No, that's the mad part. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what's the mad part? It's crazy that this hat. It's stuck to him. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah his his uh, arch enemy is a man that his head is just a berry. Yeah. 
His name is Hascap. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> That's like an, uh, a villain like four or five uh, issues in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can go to like a comic convention and turn the hat into a skull cap. And he's like, I'm Picard. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Then it looks like yep. he's not wearing a hat at all. Yeah. Nothing kind of at all. Like wearing nothing at all. <laughs> Full disclosure, and I think this is going to help with my nerd bona fides, uh, I uh, played Dungeons and Dragons with a couple of friends uh, back in uh, Victoria a couple of years ago, and uh, I got this hat of disguise, and I immediately thought, oh, it's a hat that can turn into any other hat. And that's how I used it for all of the game, until they told Not me at the end. as a full disguise. No. <laughs> and they're like... <laughs> <coughs> and that's the- I mean, that's amazing. That's, that, it's so beautifully naive. That's the worst thing you'll get me to admit on the internet. That's I, incredible. I love that. That's, that's amazing. Incredible. That's good nerd cred, too. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons deliberately misusing a magical artifact? <laughs> well, I just didn't know. <laughs> I love that. Amazing. That's amazing. Um, well, uh, if uh, if people wanted to find you on social media, is there a place where people could do that? Uh, absolutely not. Don't look for me. <laughs> Don't try and find me. Great plug segment. Oh. Yeah, that, no, that, yeah. Uh, if you want my Instagram, uh, become friends with me, uh, and then I'll give it to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you got to go the long way. This guy makes you work for it. Yeah, yeah and even at the end, not worth it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's no pictures. No, <laughs> throw some decent Power Girl content. Oh yeah. Oh, an insane yeah. amount of Power Girl. Yeah. My Power yeah. Girl alt is huge. Yeah, <laughs> you should see his Deviant Art page. <laughs> Oh right. Yeah, it's just that and Sonichu. <laughs> and yet, even somehow Sonichu is pregnant. I don't understand. Yeah, with Power Girls, baby. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's fucked up. <laughs> uh, we would love to hear what type of characters you can come up with. Yes, um, use the hashtag DialDoc and send your idea. Or you can send us a question for next week's episode. Next week's episode is all about like hideouts, bases, lairs. Uh, Things I cry in. Under the stairs. <laughs> Good rhyme. Yeah. Uh, like one of those Johnny Cars when he's just holding it to his head. Hideouts, lairs. <laughs> yeah. uh, places I cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's next week's theme. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, or just, you know, you can nerd out with us online uh, using our various social media platforms, such as our Facebook. Dr. DC Podcast. Our Twitter. At Dr. DC. Instagram. Dr. DC Podcast. Email. Dr. DC Podcast at gmail.com. Of course, we've got our subreddit, baby. R slash Dr. Underscore DC. And the doc phone is open. 208-917-3238. Just give us a phone call. Leave us a message. Have a few yeah. laughs. Come yeah. to the coast. Yeah, our operators are up late waiting for you. <laughs> 208-917-DCEU. 995 a minute to talk to the doctor himself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of course, you can also go to our website, drdcpodcast.com or .ca, where you can buy our merch. Buy our merch. Buy our merch. Uh, and give us a five star review on yes, iTunes please. or anywhere else. Yeah, uh, we're on our way to 100. And do you know what? I like it. If we get to 100, yeah. we'll do the Lord of the Lord of the Rings mini series. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, and of course, speaking of extra content, We've got uh, a Patreon. Yeah, yeah patreon.com slash Dr. DC. Every uh, week. There's two tiers. If you go $5 a month, Silver Age level, you get a full bonus episode every week. The double dose where we nerd out about different stuff. Sometimes DC, sometimes not. Yeah. Uh, and Golden Age level, $7 a month, only two bucks more. <coughs> you, in addition to that, get uh, the prescribed reading. It's a video episode every yeah. week where we talk about something I'm currently reading. You get to vote. Is there nudity? On, I don't know. There could be. Who knows? Uh, you get to vote on episode themes each month. You get to help us decide on like reading assignments. You get a merch discount. It's it's dope. If you want to see what normal really means, it's only one way to find out. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah, it's for only seven dollars. That's yeah, the we're gonna my, the cost of my dignity. Yeah, the doctor's constantly just trying to normalize it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's it for this week. Adios. Ciao, ciao. Goodbye. Heroes, they always fight for what is right. Live with danger and adventure. They are men of might. This was a Brain Freeze podcast. <laughs>